Go ahead, Tony. <coughs> How about you, Chris? Are you unmuted yet? No. I think, okay. I think he's trying to set up or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So what, what, what part of Brooklyn are you from, Prince? I'm in Bed-Stuy. Uh, I, Bed I was born in Red Hook. Oh, I was born you? in Red Hook. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, now you're in bed All right. Yeah. Do, as they say, do or die, bed die. Yeah, yeah, but do, well, do you... Do you know a guy, old school guy, that was called Radio Rahim? Radio Rahim, out of Brooklyn. You know, the only Radio Rahim I know, or that I, I did know, was from um from from the movie Do the Right Thing. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, Radio I'm Rahim, saying, man. Right, 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 right. Rahim. I thought we've known each other for a long time, right? Because I'm old for old school. Okay. Now, um, he's been posting every day with a mask, you know, walking through Brooklyn, informing people like what's going on, you know, the social distancing, right, right, how right, neighbors right, right, are right, reaching right. out to one another, right, right. Uh, checking in on the elderly, things like that. That's, that's, that's wonderful, man. So he's that's still cool. do, doing the right thing. So he's he, so that's his. He actually that's actually he actually uses that name, Radio Rahim. Yeah, well, he announces him now as uh, Cosmic Joy. Oh, okay. And okay. He, 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 each um, send that he puts out, he goes, "Hi everybody, it's me, Radio. You know, Radio Rahim. Now Cosmic Joy. You know, checking in from Brooklyn, USA. You know, like right. that. And he does like he walks through. He was walking through Bed Stuy. Uh, and uh, and like I say, doing some real nice neighborly things and letting, you know, like I said, checking in on the elderly and and just giving us a look at what the neighborhood looks like under quarantine. Okay. And giving good advice, you know, not alarmist right. advice, just good right, right, safety right, right, right. advice and care for your neighbors. Right. True. Yeah. Looking like you got out of here just in time, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, yeah, the good time when you was here. Who me? When you came? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I always have a good time. See, because I can have a good time in New York because I live in Paris. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I bring my new work over in poetry or jazz poetry. I mm -hmm. do my thing, and then um, I come back to Paris, so I don't get caught up in the the, the expenses of the city. Exactly. Oh. Or you know how it is in New York. Somebody say, hey, ma'am, what have you been doing lately? And I'll say, oh, I just did a new piece last Wednesday. And they say, no, I ask you what you're doing lately. <laughs> <laughs> so I get out of that, 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 that New York, you know, madhouse, you know, how it can be. So um, right, you ain't right. producing enough unless you just laid the golden egg that very moment. Right, right. And so I, mean, I love New York, but. But, but uh, you know, so I, I manage New York better by living in Paris. Right, right. Well, you know, I, they, I, 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 I was hoping to get to get there this this sometime this year. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on this damn virus thing, whatever. You mm -hmm. know. But, um, right. Now, one thing's for sure: the airlines are begging for passengers. So once we decide it is safe to fly, actually safe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, let's hope that them flat nails, the airline prices are as cheap as they are now. Wow. Somebody told me they flew like, they got an offer of Chicago to Paris, $200, $215. What? Jesus. What? Nah. I'll, put on, I'll put on like, I'll put on three masks or four masks, whatever. <laughs> Man in the bubble. <laughs> Give me some saran wrap, baby. You no. Know? You know, I'll, I'll you make my own makeshift hazmat, man. Yeah. You can you can fly from Chicago to Las Vegas for like eighteen, fifteen dollars right now. Wow. Nah. You in Chicago, brother? I'm near Mr. Chicago. I'm near there. We got yeah. Bill Strangmeyer joining us soon. Uh, so Mr. You know, McNally, you from uh, New York City, bro? Yes, sir. Brooklyn, New York. Uh, okay, I got. I got uh, some Kendra peeps in Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn is in my heart all the time. Okay, appreciate. Yeah, and I perform there too. I featured as a poet there. Yeah, Brooklyn, 
Brooklyn is the place to be, you ask me. Uh, what what spot? You you know the spot? Uh, Tilly's Cafe, they closed down. They were right across the street from Prospect Park. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brooklyn, Brooklyn's what's up. Now, what do you guys think, what do you guys think of the Bronx? You know, I can count on, on, on this one finger. How many times I've been to the Bronx, man? Wow. You know what? It's like a, it, that's like a foreign country. <laughs> so damn, <laughs> it's so far. It's so far, man. I mean, yeah. Usually people okay. like my peeps from the Bronx, they come down. We meet in Manhattan. We meet in the Midway. Right, 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 right. That, you know? Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I used to, I used, I used to date a girl up in the Bronx, but I mean, you no, know, I was driving at that point. But now yeah. I'm like, I ain't trying to get up in the Bronx. Man. That's a long distance relationship. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you know what I find exactly. interesting about the Bronx? It, it, when I went there for the first time, and I've been in New York several times, it, it surprised me that it was very, well, the, the, the area that I went to was very neighborhoody. It reminded me of some spots here in the Midwest where I was born and raised at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, people have a people have a um, have a misconception about the. I mean, you know, they think when they say that when they when you hear Bronx, a lot of people thinking South Bronx or you know like back in the eighties or something like that. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's some Westchester. There's some really nice, you know, areas in the Bronx, man. Really, what? really beautiful. The reason why I'm asking is I was always down in Manhattan, you know, the West Village, East Village, right, right. Me Brooklyn. Too. And then a couple of years ago, I started getting gigs in the Bronx and, right. and knew some jazz people, some jazz cats from in the Bronx. Um, uh, and they had more living space living up in the Bronx, right? You know, right. they were at. And so that's why I was asking because uh, I find myself happily doing gigs in the Bronx, which is, uh, I like the people. And then below me is the Dominican neighborhood where the food is, you know, like this place jumps around the clock. The food is good. People are nice. And so I'm going, hey, the Bronx is all right with me. That part of the Bronx, right? Because it's a right, big right, right. world. That's why I was asking. Mm. And what about Nina here? We got Nina online. We got um, Bill as well. And we got Bill. Hey. Uh, let me just give a shout out to Nina. I hope you can hear us, Nina. Uh oh! Can you hear us? I think I think she's still uh, setting up her audio. Yeah. Uh, maybe she. Need... Nina, if you uh, if you want to speak, you have to click join audio. Or... Man. So how you doing, Bill? Yeah, pretty good. Now, now we're representing people. from. Hey, you guys! Now we're representing from Jersey over here. <laughs> Years uh, ago. Yeah, I mm -hmm. invited a few people tonight, Mo. Okay, good. All right, good, good. Bill, I should have guessed you were from New Jersey, man. I can I can tell that Jersey accent. <laughs> I've lost a lot of it because I teach English in Paris. Uh, we got Roxanne, and she can she's coming in. Roxanne Hoffman. Okay. Roxanne. Right. Hello, Roxanne. Uh, I th I think her microphone is muted. One second. Hey, Maroxy, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Hi. Hi, Roxanne. Hi. Where, where in the world are you from tonight, Roxanne? Hoboken. Oh, wow. Wow. Hoboken. Jersey, Hoboken, Jersey. Hoboken, New Jersey. Look Jersey. out, man. <laughs> All right. Hey, Bill, Bill, you know, Bill, I used to live in Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah Roxanne! From... Montclair's cool. Yeah, I'm from uh, New Brunswick, the New Brunswick area. Ah, okay. You on your hey Christopher, <laughs> uh, uh -huh. uh, you you've been uh, uh, you, you've been tour, touring as a spoken word poet in the states, right? I have a lot. Yeah. Uh, you, have you have you crossed paths with a southern uh, spoken word artist? His name is um, G. Amazawa. I've, I've heard the name, but I haven't met him. G. Uh, oh, you should look him up, brother. The guy, the guy, the guy has a. He's from the south, but he has the most Brooklyn accent uh, ever. And his and uh, the guy is amazing. He's basically Jap. Uh, he's half Japanese. Uh, oh no, no, he's he's Japanese. His his entire family is Japanese, but he has a Brooklyn accent. 
and, uh, and uh, uh, he's from the south. He actually uh, he actually has a poem uh, called uh, "How Does It Feel to Be an Asian from the South." <laughs> Oh, wow. so, <laughs> you know, he's amazing. He's really. Amazing. I'll look and, that up. Yeah, man. Uh, so, and, man, the the and he he's uh, 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 he's definitely into rap as well. Like he his introduction for into spoken word started in a writing class where the teacher was trying to teach him how to write poetry, and so he decided to. Uh, because he was lazy, he decided to cheat uh, so Tupac and uh, Biggie Small lyrics and just try mm -hmm. to fit them together. And he's like, and the teacher was impressed. And he's like, wow, so this is poetry. Huh? Okay, maybe I can get into this. And now he's uh, he's a. Uh, I, I think I think he 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 won. Uh, uh, he has. I, I don't know what the term is for for a global slam champion award, but he he ha he has some kind of title of that particular nature. So, well, I wonder if we know him in Paris then, because uh, the International Slam Finals are held in Paris, even though they were started by that guy, uh, last name Smith, out of Chicago. So every year um, in the late spring, there is the grand finale of International Slam Contest uh, staged in Paris. Hmm. So maybe we'll have to look. You know, somebody helped me with Nina here. Nina said she just messaged she said she can hear us, but she has this, not activated her audio. And I asked her if there's a sign below, like activate audio, no? On the bottom of her screen? Yeah, uh, uh, at the bottom left. Uh, it, it would help to, to know if she was using a, a, a laptop or a, or a phone. Maybe that would help. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, she's using her Lenovo desktop. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. She. I can. Okay. See, she's in the chat. Um, she's done the hey, chat. Prince, uh, do you have? Oh, can I uh, actually, do you see Biggie is the best rapper to ever come out of Brooklyn, New York, or New uh, or period? Oh, f f am I saying that? Uh, I, I'm asking Prince. Like, is 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 Biggie the best ever to come out of New York City or period? All right, I'm interested to hear that's, the that's, answer. That's a, that's, a, that's a heavy debate. I'd say Biggie. You know, some might say Jay. Mm. But, uh, I mean, Biggie had a small repertoire. You know, he had a small run. So he did you know, so I have to give it to Jay because, I mean, we're talking 10 years. No, actually, wow. We're talking like 15 years. Mm -hmm. Funny, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, if you look at his catalog, it's it's freaking amazing. Yes, you know, Biggie yes. had Biggie had two albums. Yeah, but he died early. But he died early. Exactly. Yeah. So so it's, it's 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 you know I I don't I don't know you know how to. Find I, the, find the, find what I what I will say is that Biggie is probably the only the, the only rapper who ha, who has given. The record label that worked with him. What, what was it called again? I forgot. Um, what, uh, what was it called? The record label that worked with with Biggie or that sponsored Biggie's album? Bad Boy. Yeah, Bad Boy. I think I think he is. I think he is the only name that I could recall from Bad Boy Records. I don't know. I don't know any yeah. other rapper's name. So, uh, Little Kim. Huh? You don't remember Little Kim? Nate. Little Kim. Oh, Nate Doc. Mace. 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 Ma oh, Mace was Bad Boy Mace. Records. Yeah, he he mm -hmm. he kind of flourished at the boogie. You know, Biggie was after off the scene. Yeah. You know, but uh, he was okay. He was okay, but he wasn't Biggie. Yeah. Now, who Big was that kid? Hmm. There was a dude. Um. Oh my God, I can't think of his name. Ice Cream Brother. Um. From Brooklyn. I don't know if he was from Bro Brooklyn. Um. What was his name? Remember that song? Craig Mack. Yeah, Craig Mack. Craig Nice. Craig Nice. 
Craig, Craig Mack. No, he was he was on, he was on another level, and they kind of they kind of shut him out because him and Biggie was coming up together, and Craig mm -hmm. Nice was nice. Very. He was yeah, that nice. song "Flavor in Your Ear." That's what you're talking about. Yeah, flavor yeah, in your ear. Hot. Flavor in your ear, and he had he had flow, and he had style. He was, uh, of course, you know, very animated. Boy, Biggie, well, Biggie, in terms of flow, Biggie. In terms of in terms of in terms of passion, Pac. Pac. Yes. Yeah. Now I was with Pac. He, because I liked his uh, inspiration, you know, what he stood for. Yeah. Biggie was super cool, and Pac was right on time for that time and, and time after, you know. Well, the, th the thing about Pac, man, is, 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 is that he was, in, he was in deep conflict. Yeah. Like, I, I would have liked to see the Pac, the Tupac, you know, now. I would have liked to see him as, as, as a, as a, as a full-grown man. Do Ain't that I mean? the truth? I, he was doing some crazy stuff, you know, silly stuff yeah. that he, you know. That's true. One, one cut was right on time for consciousness, and the next cut was, you know, I'm go, I'm go, I'm go, yeah. you know. The, I mean, dear mama just, you know, that stole all the ladies' hearts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was just so many things, but mm -hmm. he was he, a culture. He was, he was, he was in conflict though. Yeah. He didn't know he if he wanted to be the gangster, or if he right. wanted to be, or if he wanted to be Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. Right, I would agree I think with that's that. A good, a good way to put it. And that's 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 my inspiration. That's well, that's one of my inspirations, Bob Marley, and yeah, um, yeah Bob Marley was definitely my biggest inspiration in terms of message and spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me take a minute here to uh, introduce everybody to uh, a couple new faces that have come on screen. And uh, one of them is Cesar Eduardo, New York, Paris. Hello. Hey. Hey, yeah. how's it going, man? Oh, how's it going? Thanks, and, Mo. Uh, Both Mo's. <laughs> <laughs> Our pleasure. And, and next to him is, geez, we look in East Coast tonight, is another New York transplant to Paris here. Uh, Hello, Mr. New York to Paris. Jack Cooper. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Cooper having a bad you having and a bad hair day, bro. And what's that? <laughs> you having a bad hair day. Oh no, this is a good hair day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy I have hair. Right away. Yeah. No, I, I decided not to uh, bathe this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, All right. good, good, good thing we're doing. Distancing. It saves on, you go. It saves on, it saves on soap. I need to wash my hands. <laughs> You're going to do a piece called uh, Stronger Than Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Followed by Toe Jam Man. Yeah, to quote. Uh, I'm a Toe Jam Man. Yeah, to quote Gertrude Stein, uh, dirt is clean when it uh, when it's a volume or it comes in volume or something like that. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right, good. Now, uh, and Tony wants it. We have we have a friend on board here, participant Tony McNally, who wishes to remain faceless. So just know okay. he's with us. And, and and look who's here now. We have okay. Candace McNally. We have three. Hello, we have three. Uh, she, she, uh, uh, she's connecting. We have three McNallys in the show. In the in in the Zoom chat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Look out. <laughs> McNallys are representing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn's repping. Okay. Brooklyn's representing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right. And uh, for those of you who just came on, uh, two of you know very well Nina Zavencevich. Uh, and, she, and she 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 left and then she gonna try to come back and see if that works. Yeah, she oh. she got on today. I worked with her earlier in the afternoon. Um, um, I worked with her earlier in the afternoon. She had a little confusion about a ho how to hook up with us, and she was on for a while, but she could not get her own audio going. 
Oh, she could hear us but not speak. So we're hoping uh, she'll return. Yo, uh, Great. T T Tony, really we're getting happy. feedback from your end, my brother. Oh, because we're sitting next to each other. Hold on. Sure. So, Mo, have you already introduced Roxanne? Uh, where is Roxanne? Over here. Right Hello, there. Roxanne. Yes, yeah. we talked to Roxanne. Okay. Yeah. While you were doing your hair, we were doing yeah. Roxanne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While you were doing that gel, that magic gel. Yeah, I was, gel. I, was, I was rolling on the floor. <laughs> Hello, Roxanne. So you are the Roxanne, right? Yeah. Right, the Roxanne. Yeah. Yep. I, I didn't know. It was a uh, the Roxanne. Right. Well, she's you my, know, I know Jack enough to know your key role with Prada. Yeah, she's my better half of uh, Poets for Prada. Okay. Good, good. Uh, and now, Candice, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I can. Oh, oh, we, and now we can hear you. We hear echoes. Yeah, we, we got feedback. Uh, Talk to us, Candice. Uh, she, wait, I think, she, I think, she's, uh, I think yeah. she's fixing up something. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Candice, can you talk to us a minute? We want to check your audio. Hello. Little, little stronger, please, so we can hear you. Candice McNally. Okay, and when you present, okay. when you present, give us a little more volume because we want to hear them words. You have a well, soft I'm, voice. Um, I'm new to Zoom, so I'm still. Trying to okay, that. that's cool. Do I turn this up? Let me see. I'm not sure how to do it. Hold on. Sure, take a minute. That's all right. Take your time. Take your time. Hello, can you hear me better now? Oh, real well. Oh, That's yeah. Good. Oh, okay. I That's guess good. Too no. far. Hi, Roxanne. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> good. Now, it's, at one point we had three McNallys on the screen. Are you all related? Yeah, that's my, Tony's my my son, Candace is my daughter. Oh, all right. Oh, that's great. That's <laughs> ideal. Family, family affair. Hi, I'm McNally's. Hi. <laughs> okay, everybody say hi. <laughs> okay. Hi. So, okay. So, um, all right. Now, is this Tony sitting on your left or on my screen? Is that you, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we got you here, and now we see you. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. Real good. Well, all right, then. Well, welcome aboard, everybody. And uh, for those of you who are new, uh, one thing about the Angora Poets World Cafe is uh, we call ourselves a World Cafe because from the beginning, when, when I and others started this, we very much wanted to encourage people from all different points on the planet. And, and, and we wanted also to encourage people from different language backgrounds and, and, and different poetry expressions. And so it's quite common for us when we meet in Paris, uh, where we will read in English, in French, in Spanish, in Russian, uh, we've read in Greek, in Serbian, and somebody just simply gives a brief explanation about what they're about to read, and then they launch into it, and we encourage them to launch into it and say, you know, it's a language I don't understand. So please launch into it with some passion and conviction, and we get to appreciate it that way. And we find with open ears, you know, an open mind and open ears, we're gaining something by listening to people speaking a different language than our own. So that may come up tonight, particularly if we get Nina on board. Uh, and, and we have people who read in Spanish and, and Serbian and all kinds of languages. We welcome them. Uh, so far, it looks like uh, Anglais. So far, pretty much like Anglais. Okay. <laughs> Look, okay. Anyway, all right. So I think we could start now, you know, and other people come on board. Uh, that'll be just fine. Oh, hey, Red. Huh? Red. Red we got Red. Red, Red w. Oh, here he is. Oh, look at him. Just a, he's only 15 minutes late. I know that man. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Red? 
I'm 15 hey, minutes late and, and I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your wife again? Uh, not, not really. No, no, no. Okay. What you mean you gotta go? I just wanted to connect to, to, to let you guys know that I, can, I can't tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, you can or you cannot? Cannot, cannot. Oh, oh, oh man. man. You're breaking oh, up. You're breaking up, huh, brother? Man, that's a teaser, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, it'll happen. It'll happen. Well, I'll tell you what, Rat. Yeah. Because you are a star, for the rest of you, huh? A rich and stalwart poet living here in Paris from Lesotho down in the southern end of Africa. And uh, he's one of, one, of, one of our standout poets. And so for that reason, because he got to go before his wife gives him the hook, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Rhett, if you would be our first reader this evening, would you do that? Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, what okay. could I read? Um, g give me a minute to go in and look for something to read. Okay, that'll be good. That'll be good. Give me just and, uh, a minute. Sure. Uh, and, and Roxanne, Roxanne, now I know yeah. you're, you're a publisher. Are you also going to present something this evening? Yeah, I'm going to present a translation, a poem I translated. Oh, oh okay. Good, 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 good. All right. Um, okay. Roxanne, where is uh, Hoboken? Uh, where is that on the Jersey? Where is Hoboken? It's right by New York. It's across the river from Manhattan. Uh, okay, that's so It's right. in Hudson County, the most northern part of Jersey. Gotcha. It's on the subway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, like, well, the path, the path. Well, like any more, Hoboken is like, you know, West New York, right? Yeah. No, West New York is West Am New I allowed York. to say that? It's close to West uh, New York, uh, it's near Weehawken, okay. Union City, Jersey City. Jersey City, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. So it looks like Rhett is back. How's it looking, Rhett? I'm looking for a stool. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Get yourself comfortable. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, Wow, I'm just trying to fill up some time here and get red on before you got to go. Mm. Um, so, He's coming. what we've been asking people to do, by the way, we've been asking people to read three pieces in the first round. Right. So, we really encourage you to read three pieces. And, um, okay. Because that, that sounds like a good starter. So, now I want to turn it over to Retabile Masilo from Lesotho, Africa. Or, or Rhett, as we fondly call him. Over to you, Rhett. All right. How, how's the sound? Good. Yes, Good. sir. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to read three pieces, and then have to go back to paint to finish painting the room. <laughs> <laughs> For your wife. <laughs> and kids. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to hold this and um, I'll have to look uh, to the side in order to see the book. Okay. After the unrest. When we realized it was the beast and not the ghost, not the face we had grown so accustomed to in the years following our struggles with faith, it was already late. From then on until this moment, we have found ourselves exposed. Some left their homes to seek hope in martyrdom. People hungry for that day ran out cheering. We gave to mockery no salvation, no means to secure its future, which was unusual then. We went beyond our hour of need. Spouses fell for each other again and loved their children more because we'd made the city open its arms and placed in its hands the fondness we, desi we desired. We had rubbed the guilt off its hair. When the gathering burst into song, we knew that the past was gone. 
So that was the first piece. Okay. This feels good. I'm, I'm not doing any painting next week. Oh, good. Good. A poet and a painter. Sorry? You're a poet and a painter. Um, no, painting walls. <laughs> I, I've, I've been painting since I got up this morning. So here, here is the second piece called The Face of the World. No one knows whether a bird will descend or not one bird but a flock outspread in their quest for the flesh of broken spirits. A head bird leads them, slicing air with its wings. A farmer and his family dash across the fields as if the birds could be outrun or their claws evaded. No one has ever escaped the laws of nature. Or as if upon seeing them, God might decide to mercy their law. Folks. <clears throat> Come back. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear us, Red? He's frozen, isn't he? Yeah, he's got frozen. His paint has dried. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he logged off, right? Probably, but <clears throat> my guess is he bumped, he hit a button, mm -hmm. you know, handling the book and the microphone together or something. Oh. Mm. Well, that, that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go on with the next poet. And, and, and when we hear Rhett, we'll, we'll be kind enough to let him back in. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I would like at this point to, to call on uh, somebody doing some prose who's been doing a lot of prose to a lot of acknowledgement. And that would be Cesar Eduardo. Oh, thanks. Okay, I'm going to read uh, the, the journal entry that I wrote today. Uh, probably like three minutes or so. Okay. Okay. We'll just jazz here, from here on out. Philosophalia for a new historic comprehension. Stop getting caught up in the hedonic treadmill and plunge into Hegelian dynamics to clear up my awareness to its essential power of the quantum dip. Rhetoric of connection to reiterate premonitory creations. Results of this contention aren't fenced by deadlines. I'm sure you tasted my breath in circle as I scribbled down the precepts for acceptance to the trapezoid. For now, we're indoors, typing, painting, mastering a plethora of inner shapes. I bet Drattel, ancient teacher, is ample in approval. Cymatics of a mirror surface when on substances. You give me a riff and I'll develop a convention on the sky to account for lost space. I'm fed up with the goodbyes over an earth that is about to drop out of the big imprint. And this all feels like an analysis of influences that have led us beseech the neural framework at large to reach critical mass. Upcycle those perspectives to write down the waveform with sincerity and to arrive at the hyper real rearrangement of our consciousness. Once the self stuffs segmentation, you'll be a witness to an ultimate push for productivity in the field of specialty. Oh. Mom, look, I got a virtual badge. Such is the power of committee to celebrate another ride for the pal 
who got me into the business and out of the void of literary deprecation. The accent is basically malleable and the inspiration to dissect thesis is contingent. This is a wheel that performs direct turns inside applications to get organized. Oh, kaleidoscope at Rue de Cascade. How restraining for the stalwart on the Zoom salon. A lady has made her appearance and the poet got up to paint walls since awakening to the natural brushstrokes. Okay. That's it. <laughs> yep. You have another one for us? Oh, oh, wait. I was. I, I've been doing an experiment, kind of. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, so, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read like a quick poem. In three languages. Um, of this work, but it's not mine. It's from Cesar Vallejo, the the poet that I that I've been researching. Uh, What's his native land? He's from my home state in Peru, northern Peru. Um, it's Santiago de Chuco. So first, I'll read it in French. And, it, and just briefly, what is the theme of his poem? Oh, uh, it's him sitting at a cafe in Paris. Um, <laughs> nice. And, and exploring like what like he felt as a solitary exile mm. in Paris. It's called Chapeau, Manteau, Gant. En face de la comédie française se trouve le café de la Régence. Il y a là une salle cachée avec un fauteuil et une table. Lorsque j'entre, la poussière immobile est déjà debout. Entre mes lèvres faites liège, les bouts d'une cigarette fume. Et dans la fumée, l'on voit deux intenses fumées, les thorax du café. Et dans les thorax, un oxyde profond de tristesse. Il importe que l'automne se greffe sur les automnes. Il importe que l'automne s'intègre dans les bourgeons, les nuages dans les semestres. Dans les pommettes, la ride. Il importe de passer pour fou en postulant que chaude est la neige, fugace la tortue, simple les commands et les camps fulminants. So that, that's in French. Merci. Uh, and uh, well, um, let me try to find it uh, in. Um, hold on. Languidamente. Uh, oh, there it is. That'll do in Spanish. Sombrero, abrigo, guantes. Enfrente a la comedia francesa está el café de la regencia. En él hay una pieza recóndita, con una butaca y una mesa. Cuando entro, el polvo inmóvil se ha puesto ya de pie. Entre mis labios hechos de jeve, la pavesa de un cigarrillo humea. Y en el humo se ve dos humos intensivos, el tórax del café, y en el tórax, un óxido profundo de tristeza. Importa que el otoño se injerte en los otoños. Importa que el otoño se integre de retoños. La nube de semestres, de pómulos la arruga. Importa oler a loco postulando que cálida es la nieve, que fugaz la tortuga, el cómo que sencillo, que fulminante el cuándo. And the last is the translation in English. Hat, overcoat, gloves. In front of the Comédie Française is the Café de la Régence. In it is a room set apart with an armchair and a table. When I enter, the unmoving dust has already risen. 
Between my lips made of rubber, the ember of a cigarette smokes, and in the smoke can be seen two intense fumes, the thorax of the cafe, and in the thorax, a profound oxide of sadness. It is important that autumn graft itself to autumns, important that autumn integrate itself with sprouts. In the cloud, with semesters, with cheekbones, the wrinkle. It is important to smell like, mat, like a madman postulating how warm the snow is, how fleeting the turtle, how simple the how, how fulminating the when. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now I, I, I'd like to call on somebody who was on screen early tonight and, and let's hear from him. Coming all the way from bed Mr. Prince McNally. Can we hear a word from bed Brooklyn, please? Well, bed Since we were talking about, we were talking about um, Brooklyn, well, MCs, this piece is a hybrid. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a rap that sort of flows into a poem. I wrote it a few years ago. And it's full of metaphors, so the title is called Metaformations. Mm. As I rip this clip of metaformations from my thought patterns, brain cells are ringing all around Saturn while back in the hood, rough riders are barking like rock rock. Prolific rhymes are catching Alzheimer's in my peeps. A mad illin from this unrehearsed verse that I be spilling with the greatest of ease, like killer bees be slinging honey. Do you feel me, money? So, microphone, check me, and please don't test me because my thoughts are deep throating like Monica Lewinsky. I'm not <laughs> Bill Clinton, so don't go acting fruity trying to impeach me over this silly chit chatter because it really doesn't matter, you see. Misogyny I'm not with, it's merely a waste of my gift, so I aim my pin towards the positive tip of the iceberg named Slim. Shady though be the hood, but it's all good, for I am the phoenix rising, uplifting the downtrodden like the homeless, begging for social change. A computer whiz, hacking into brains. I am a political prostitute, giving the government head trips to the outer limits of my subconscious so they can truly see from thine own eyes what it feels like to be demoralized, to socialize, utterly despise. See how ghetto babies never cry, woof. Or they merely cry when they are hungry and when shit needs to be changed. Yeah, okay. Can you follow that up? Prince, can you follow that up with another? I am breath. Breathing life into stones colored in soft undertones of purple and quistic eclectic soul. I am Jimi Hendrix, paying homage to the cosmos with funky guitar licks, smoking purple haze, setting the world ablaze while we igniting the world with rock music. I am Superman, supernova, superfly, soaring through the sky, high on electric blue vibes. I am love song sublime, serendipitously sung by Solomon. I am an ancient gust of wind. I am an ancient gust of wind, massaging your earlobes with deep intention. So listen to the soft, gentle breeze of your intuition, singing soulfully to the shadow silhouettes, dancing gayfully to the vibration of a distant drummer. I am the second coming, the second wind of your last breath. Hanging on the edge of tomorrow, I am Picasso, splattering the canvas with the future with brush strokes of inspiration. So don't be afraid of dying, for death is just an illusion, an impossibility, for you are infinity. Just close your eyes and dive into the waiting arms of your divine future as if it were water. Just swim that great blue ocean of you, waiting to begin anew this most splendid journey of self-discovery and self-expression. They're all yours to proclaim, cause it's a new day, a new day of life, a new day of living, a new day of beginnings, a new day to finish 
what you have started. And peace. Okay. And, and uh, three's a charm. Okay. Um, Thanks, Prince. That was good. Yeah. I'm going to do a piece called Children of the Sun. We are the 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 beautifully melanated, melanin skinned children of the sun, God's chosen ones. We are the meek and the weary stepping ever, ever slowly from the shadows of our plight. And we be getting high as a kite, soaring to cloud nine in search of the divine as a means of to escape this stinging grip of master's whip. I remember when Harriet promised to save us from our woes, to free our souls, and so we took a stroll to the underground railroad, where hip-hop tracks were banging like Swahili drum beats. So dope, the rich decided to profit off the blues of the impoverished, and thus we were the impetus to your music business. Mm. Though many of us may have sold our souls by sampling the woes of the hungry and the homeless, through poetry, I wish to atone for this by honoring the spirit of the ancestors, honoring our culture and our history by sharing our story. So with anxious lips, I spit these clips of hollow tip bullets because I'm so tired of watching my people dying in these streets. Their lifelines replaced by chalk lines, so sobering remnants of police drive-bys, blue on black crime, you psyched our minds time after time, our culture forgotten after filling our heads with your holy doctrine, a brand new testament to your new world order, forced us to drink your holy water filled with lead, and so we bled the blood of your indifference, of your entitlement. Oh, how we sing the blues of your ignorance, of your fear and your hatred, and all we could do is just take it, shaking our heads in torrid disgust, wondering why so many of us Black and Latino men, women, and children are still dying on the crossroads of your inner cities, of your inner demons, for unlike the body of Christ, our dead shall not be rising. Okay. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. We are, we're off to a good start. And Mo, I would like to welcome a Mo, new face. Mo. Yeah. Yes. The people I invited are trying to get in and they, they're being asked for a code or a meeting ID. They can't get in. Oh, uh, there. Oh, crap. I thought I already replied to you. I, I replied to Mo instead. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, the link that you clicked on, c did you try to share that with them? Yeah, uh, for the link from Facebook. Yeah, that link. Yeah, yeah that, that opens. I, I, I was asked for a for a, for a code, and I get and I gave them my own code. Maybe they don't know that. I don't know. Well, I was a, I was asked for a code, but I skipped it. Mm. I, I skipped that 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 request. And just went to click here. Uh, it's a bottom line, and it opened up, and it took an extra click rather than entering a code. Okay. I've just okay. code in the chat. It's the last. No, it's the numbers at the end of the link to the meeting. So the eight six six seven. Yeah. Some folks don't know that. But that yeah, that's a good move, folks. Don't know. Okay, say that again, please. The numbers, because I didn't need to use them. Please again, Laura. Lauren. Um, if you press the chat button on the bottom panel, it, it should come up on the side. It's a message to everyone. It's the number that begins 81667. 
it's like at the end of your link you have a number and that's also the meeting id okay yeah well okay let's hope um we want to welcome more people on board so um let, let's let's keep let's try to bring them on very very good very good uh, and you know i was gonna are you conversing now bill with the people uh by yeah i'm messaging okay then in that case uh let, let me hear from someone else we have not heard from over in uh hoboken usa she's <laughs> roxanne hoffman with poets wear prada and uh, would you please present for us roxanne okay thanks um i'm gonna read an old poem to start um called Even the Smallest Child. Even the smallest child knows without our saying that uncut the green grass grows without our saying the warm bright summer sun glows without our saying the red rooster wakes and crows without our saying the old river ebbs and flows without our saying the bee buzzes by the rose without our saying. Its leaves crunch beneath our, oh, sorry. Fall arrives, the tree sap slows without our saying. Its leaves crunch beneath our toes without our saying. Its acorns, the gray squirrel slows without our saying. When the cold northern wind blows without our saying, in their caves, the black bears doze without our saying. The bleak gray winter sky snows without our saying. Last winter, the boat pond froze without our saying. Spring arrives, the hard ground thaws without our saying. Shoots sprout, trees bud, their sap flows without our saying. Mother Nature's green thumb shows without our saying. Each new season comes and goes without our saying. But love never ever grows without our saying, I love you. And can, can you follow that with a second one, please? Sure. Okay. See which one. Okay, so this is a riff on Rumpelstiltskin. Riff on, riff on. <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin. Dear sir, but for a slip I might call you father, or be the son you never had, junior to your senior, Rumpelstiltskin and son, magicians and matchmakers will transmute. 21 and five three on tippy toes i have your beady eyes wink wink mother sends her regards smiles beguile happiness and fictions live daily often come true you see she too has charms taming despot to princely even cast her spell on you babe in the woods victim of father's pride with all your tricks you never stood a chance lemons sunshine silver haloed she'll own daily applied spun her wheat locks to gold not quite magic but that's love with every twist of her locket still upon your neck she knows you wear her ring on your pinky Twinkling in the sunlight unlocks rainbows. Yeah. All right. And how about Roxanne? Three's a charm. <laughs> okay. The last one is uh, called Chrysalisis. It's in a translation of a poem by Jose and Sancion Silva. And the original poem was called uh, Chrysalidas. When a girl still burning with fever, yet one morning ventured outside, wandering with shaky steps, uncertain and unsure to the neighboring hillside, she returned with a bouquet of wildflowers, concealing a dormant chrysalis 
to place within her sick room chambers, close to her bed of white lace. A few days later, gathering as she died all around her bedside, our eyes clouded by sobs, our minds troubled with doubts. At the moment she expired, we were distracted by flutters, making his winged escape through the old wooden shutters and into the garden and daylight was a small golden butterfly. Spotting the cell, now devoid of the insect, I hurried on to inspect the girl. One touch to the clammy pale forehead assured me she was dead. And I thought, if the winged butterfly in leaving his dreary cell encounters daylight, fresh air, and the great expanse of wide open spaces, well, what glories will the soul find as they cast their mortal shells behind? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank yeah. you, Roxanne. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Some people. Trump All right. In and uh, Bill, any luck with any luck with the people trying to get in? I mean, we don't see them on screen. Any I, luck? Ju I just sent the code that uh, that Lauren put up. Okay. I'm I'm happy to uh, send them a link to their emails, uh, Bill. If if they got any emails, I'm happy to send it to them. I'm trying to help them. Okay, I'll I'll send it to you in a message. Huh? I have to look it up. All right. Okay. Um, let, let let's go with the McNally family again. We have a we have a young lady sitting over there, nice and quiet, very quiet. Candice. Perfect. Hi. Would you please present for us? <laughs> what am I presenting? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question, girl. <laughs> no, she said, "What is she presenting?" <laughs> That's for you to answer. I don't have any pieces oh. to present. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought this you were presenting. My dad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what about your brother on the on the side there with you? Is he presenting? Anthony, please come. You have something to present? No. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know what? You um, this hopefully, like other readings, will inspire you to write your own work, or mm -hmm. to come on with a piece of work that does inspire you that you could read by somebody else. You know, carry the message of someone else's voice through your that's own. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that that's a hundred percent legit. You go with yeah. that. Okay. Stay with us now. Okay. okay very good. So. Um, Let's see here. Can we call on, uh, oh, Safwa, Mohammed, how are you tonight? Uh, she, she's connecting audio. Well, okay, right. she's connecting. Uh, we'll say hi to her in a minute. Can you hear us now? How you doing? Hi, I can hear you. I, now where in the world are you from? Like, I don't I'm know. The, um, I live in the UAE in Abu Dhabi, but I'm from Sudan. Okay. All right. Good to hear. Laura is also a part of uh, Lauren is also a part of the Abu Dhabi uh, poetry uh, uh, family as well. Abu Dhabi's hot. <laughs> we had we had one of your fellow poets on here a couple of weeks ago from Darfur, who uh, oh, from awesome. Darfur who who moved to Abu Dhabi. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. We are the World Cafe. Welcome. So now I would like to take this world over to, to a guy who's living in Paris, and his name is Jack Cooper. Jack? Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I have something called In Hoboken. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you'd laugh. Uh, <clears throat> out on the water where I muse, resistant to the stream of care. Never have I felt so an echo through soft winds that pass, nor such still, unmoved, magnificent emotion. Nothing may curtail toll soundless, 
melancholy, chamber music, for a heart keeps time with silence, evanescent, whose beat has none. Uh, and so, <laughs> is that a mic drop? <laughs> I'll look out. All right. Showing off his greenery in his apartment. Yeah. Uh, the next poem is called Tulip. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That was his way of demonstrating his poem next piece. Exactly. Hmm. That's the, uh, the ding and sick. I see. <laughs> Tulip. The soft air is nigh. It suspends me. It would float me thither, not to return. But I must sleep. Tulip is the spring perfectly expressed. Its color glows with the same wet brilliance that is fecundity returning, filling the air with weightless, dark suggestion. Spring is the pupil of the eye, open in the dark, expanding, filling, following what it still cannot visualize precisely. The dream with the rapid eye open, hoping. <laughs> Thank you. On up with uh, Three's a Charm. Okay. I feel pretty charmed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I thought I'd end on a, uh, on a, what is it? Um, uh, I guess it's a classical note, a mythical note with this called a mythic. If I'm missing it, I can't uh, Where is it? I apologize. I had it here. Oh, okay. Um, technical difficulty. Take your time, good sir. Thank you. I need it. Ah, here it is. Okay. A mythic. Sometimes there can be no Agamemnon, nor Clutemnestra. Things must remain as they are. The tiny troubled souls, unknown to any but themselves. There, beneath the moment abridged, the interval that lingers like breath. We take what solace avails, disappointment, errors leading to mistake, suddenly realized, if uncomprehended. Give us this day, holy, to make amends for all had not been anticipated. 
the slippage that lands only precisely when we fall. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I see another face joining us. And do I say this right? Raham? Yeah, hello, where's Raham? Hi, and where, yeah. where are you? Where in the world are you from tonight, Raham? <laughs> I'm in Saudi Arabia. Okay, okay, good. Welcome. Are you, going you. To are you going to present for us tonight? Yeah, sure. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, we don't mind either. Good. Welcome on board. Good for you. Thank you. Okay. Well, now that he's trying to help out some other people getting on board, I'd like to move us over to uh, over to the Jersey side <laughs> and, ask Bill, and ask Bill Strangmeyer to, to present for us, please. Uh, Bill, I believe uh, your audio is off. Uh, we can't hear you, and I'm trying to unmute you, but it ain't working. Okay, there you go. All right. Send okay. those emails, by the way. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks, Mo. See, Mo and Mo are trying to keep this thing on screen tonight. The Mo Mo's. <laughs> okay, so... I don't know if you all know Rodney Crowell. I know love is all I need, and that's all I know. It's called homemade and sweet smelling, not, not, still not a sale. From time to time, it comes to lift me, comes to coddle, proof of God. And when I feel the pastel meaning, the little nightgowned angels flying past, I know that there is room to spare within the lines that keep me warm and odd. The pastel longing for the great beyond is what I hate, is what the enemy instills in every thought of goodness, each desire bearing light or else enlightening cast. And yet sometimes it comes to lift me, comes to coddle me as if a proof of God. Without desire, what is love and love without desire? One burns, what's absent chills. And longing for completeness is the compensation for the rancor that will last and that will fill the room that's left within the lines that keep me warm and odd. The good and evil left-hand path and all as one are still no answer for our ills. For life and disappointment, joy and crime and fear and hate and love are treacherous and vast. And at each time, some welcome small resistance comes to lift me, corny and carnal, proof of God. And this is how I've kept apart, have kept the hard edge, kept the sentimental frills that led me straight into the store of questions and of weaknesses that I've amassed, all knowing that the room to spare within those lines has kept me warm and odd. We never know what random thoughts or turns of thought might serve to turn our wills to reverence or odd resistance to the call that comes perhaps to live one's faith as if a fast. Yet time to time it comes to lift me still, comes in to coddle, Proof, you'd say, of God, but well, I know there's room to spare within the lines that keep me warm and odd. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, and this one is called, I love you. The selfish word is written gold upon the air and brings vibration, shows a thirst and selfish, for it brings a light to bear upon each actor in the pair. The first to speak is blithely light and feels the gravitas the spoken word brings to the first. Accepting it is as if a trap, an honor and a gift, a blessing one must earn. The drug that love is fills the soul with ripples like a flowing stream, and being loved is being owned, a goal for some, for others a chain that can pull two ways. The declaration should secure both ends, drunken dew and zoned out dream are best if shared and owned by each, not thrown like a lariat into a haze. The tragedy of love is that it can be real, as real as you and me, if we indeed are real, each seeing clear the other, reading the person whole and true and adding nothing else. Or it can be a deal, defiance, a gesture, joke, illusion, game, an escape, or even for some a meal, for vampires live in your spirit's world, and two fortunes bound are truly wealth. 
choose wisely, fools that we are. Don't pan for gold and find but pyrite rust. You can die while dreaming or living in heaven, or end your stay here as dust. Okay. Uh, well, this isn't exactly a poem, but uh, I call it Meanings of Love. Five feet of heaven in a ponytail that sways with a wiggle, with a wiggle when she walks, wanting to be the other person, an enacted emotion. Agape filia storge eros. Tenderness like before in your fingertips. Somebody to dance with. To know, know, know him. How deep. She looks wonderful tonight. Stick like glue. Pushing a boy out a window off a tower. One side of a thin line. The most spectacular, indescribable, deep, euphoric, euphoric feeling for someone. But we're all drama queens. Nature's way of tricking people into reproducing. Just a four-letter word. It is a river that drowns the tender need. It is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. It is a hunger, an endless aching need. It is a flower and you its only seed, only for the lucky and the strong. A rose, a desire for the soul, great chemistry, either a horrible disease or a blessing. All you care about, the reason people kill themselves, blind. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, maybe we can switch genders now. And, uh, sorry, I was okay. get my gun. Well, anyway, I was wondering if we could invite another first timer onto the screen, uh, uh, Lauren, Lauren Appleby. Yes, you, Lauren. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, this piece is called Miso Soup. Um, for what felt like 40 days and 40 nights, they had drawn curtains and huddled together. It felt as if they had perched on the balls of their feet until a layer of dust had settled over them and proclaimed their bodies as kin, a layer of dead skin upon dying skin. In dawn's early night, he creaked back to life to ask her if she shares the insatiable hun hunger that has become him. Vertebrae by vertebrae, her neck cracked as she turned to peer upon his face. They disentangled their bodies from the surroundings that had thought them inanimate as, if to, as to stand as if human once again. Jittering, her arms slowly reached out for him as a loyal disciple would reach for holy robes three days post-resurrection. Crucifixion. <laughs> Their hands met in the single ray of illuminated lamppost light that was permitted entry into the room. With a calm caress, his hand moved up her arm to her chest and he kept it there for a second until he felt, until he felt her fist size organ beat proud against her chest. It is said that when in the company of its lover, two hearts will beat in sync. She asked what would satisfy his hunger and he told her miso soup, but only if it was served in a bowl he had carved from her femur and sipped with a spoon made of her teeth. So of course she agreed. They settled on the settee with miso soup, her back against backrest, him sat on the floor, head resting on her femur bone thigh, pausing in between sips to knock teeth with her during soft kisses. Is love really love without having woken up in the middle of the night, zombie-like, to eat some miso soup? Cool, cool, yum. cool, cool. <laughs> yum, yum. That's bringing it down to basics. Thank you. You have another one? Yeah. Um, yeah, but only this one. This one is like, a, it's half done and is the most recent thing that I've been working on. Okay, so. work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> You could it's do cool. some of your old stuff too, you know. No, past is the past. <laughs> Time to move Ooh. on. <laughs> um, this is called I think a lot of words. Um, I think of words a lot. <laughs> 
I think of words a lot, of filling pages with words, of filling screens with words, of filling minds with words, filling the empty spaces with words, ripping up parts of words and stuffing them inside my jacket to keep me insulated, building a bubble of closely knitted words that once formed turn out more like chain mail my armor of self-identified st strengths and weaknesses on display. And if they ask, they will not get a reply, not an open book, not a ripped out page, but a library turned mausoleum turned art piece. Questions are no longer available. Answers are no longer available. Questions are no longer valid. Your new words cannot change the words that have already been set in motion and stitched into the fabric of beings. All you can do is look on and try to digest the emotions that unfold. And in the spirit of doing in the spirit of doing three would you like to do a third sure sure um okay anise this is an old poem um this is called this is called death is a business interesting death is a business I've been trying hard to find a way to become the boss's mistress. You see, I've danced with life before, but all he taught me was that people can better match their t-shirt to their shorts than their actions to their words. Mm. On life's tongue, the word forever was semi-permanently tattooed, like the flimsy little wash-on stickers all the four-year-olds use, you see. I know that one day life will leave me frighteningly quick, like a slow burning filament flickering in a stairwell, never really knowing when my only source of light would finally go out. Now I dance with death himself like a razor blade to a wrist. He threatens to cut and I threaten to bleed, but instead he just glides over skin. We dance mostly in early morning light, my lover and I, waltzing in between selfish thoughts and splintered breaths. He never lets me speak and will not answer when I call. He treats me like a child and tells me he'd prefer <laughs> me if I was older, yet. If he'd listen, I'd tell him, baby, please take it all. All the tears and all the years, all the smiles, all the ventured miles, they never made me feel like the time I spent was worthwhile. And within the pregnant silences, death leaves me in to dwell. I give birth to certain concepts that he unlocks from within, that all this silent energy is a lesson to be had. I like to, tr I like to think he is trying to teach the beauty of patience or the art of seduction. Perhaps the notion that the tender promise of a kiss on wanting lips will always be more beautiful than the actual kiss. Sometimes when I cry, I ask him to punish me, knowing full well that he only rewards pain to those whose time has come. And so far, it seems like my days without death are not done. One day he will be the one to call with forever permanently tattooed on his tongue. My mortal bones still have ties I have yet to sever. So instead we dance, we dance and we dance and we dance. I am a puppet still bound to strings. He is the puppet master, all control lies with him. And in my dances with death, he likes to whisper in my ear, what would you give to taste me? Tell me Hayati, but do not beg for your knees are too scarred to feel the weight of your words. He never stays long enough to hear my reply, but how I ache in my bones to say, it does not matter what I want lover, I'll do as you please. Give me your kiss, the kiss of death, and then dance forever with me. You see, death is a business, and I'm the self-proclaimed reaper's mistress. Ooh. Confessional. <laughs> Thank you. That was very nice. Was very good. Okay. I want to say hello to Clara. She, she joined us. How are you? And <clears throat> want to ask you if you have something to present tonight. Uh, no. Clara? Me? Okay. <clears throat> sure. It, okay. So... I will call you in, in some minutes and glad to okay. know you will present. I will find it. And okay, good. Okay. And now I, I would, I'd like to call on uh, my co-anchor here who uh, has been setting up the Zoom Zoom so we know who's Zoom and who. And uh, I'd like to call on uh, Mr. Mo here, Mr. Mohammed Anis from Abu Dhabi. And over to you, Mo. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so this is a piece, in fact, the, uh, the only piece that I have worked on recently, let me just see if I can find it real quick. Uh, right. <clears throat> uh, all right. Come 22. Come 2022. We will mourn the leave of a visitor 
who would in cherry pick between the rich and the poor. Celebrities will flood the scenes and become the seams that bind humanity in controversies more viral than COVID-19 could ever hope to be. Blatant ignorance will no longer be a fatal mistake. In fact, blatant ignorance maketh money. Pat the doctor's back. Let the hospital admin know he's going to need it. His muscle memory soar with memories of souls wheezing in and out of the medical ward for better or dead. There'll be skeletons he'll be carrying back to his closet, and post-traumatic stress disorder will be the voice whispering from under his pillow. And while we're still in 2020, with every penny we'd usually spend on petty reasons, watching the seasons chain behind, change behind window panes, the rain falling like it's happy to be itself for once, people parading every 10 p.m. and cheering for the things they took for granted only a few months ago, let us celebrate the better versions we've become. Now, let us learn to be kind to ourselves by doing what we love. Let us learn to love, even though love is sometimes very hard to sit next to. Learn to love, even if your soul feels like it's about to pull a muscle. And for the love of God, learn to sleep. A hustle can be a rotten carrot on a stick. Oh, and uh, for the love of God, and I can't believe I'm saying this, wash your hands. <laughs> okay. All right. And you're gonna follow that, Mo. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, give me one moment, just real quick. Wow. What am I gonna follow that with? Um, could I could I pass the mic to someone else and, and then follow that, but like come back later to get that piece? Which, yeah, we can do that. We're not right. casters. We can do that. So All then right. l let us move on to someone else who, who uh, we haven't heard from before, uh, who's one of your neighbors, who's originally from the Sudan. And so I'd like to uh, uh, call on Sawa, if you would like to present, please. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, so just a little bit of um, background on these poems. They're all inspired by lyrics from a Sudanese um, singer, his name is Mustafa Sid Ahmed, um, and he mostly write, writes about um, being estranged from a lover, being distant, being far away, but also most of his poems can be read as either about a lover or about Sudan. Um, and so I've started writing a series of short poems based off of some of these lyrics, and so I'm sorry, like a lot of them are in Arabic, <laughs> um, and I've tried no, please, to like... Um... No, please feel free to read them in Arabic. Just okay. give us a brief explanation of the theme. Okay. Um, so this first one is called uh, Mustafa Never Asked to See My Papers. Um, and it's just about that. It's about distance and being away from home or being away from a loved one. You sing, للمسافة وللخيال يجغلني منك. And I wonder, what is the furthest distance you have been from a lover? Do you know the anger of a black hole ocean that swallows hope whole and spits it out as bitterness? You sing, You sing, how circumstance will not shackle your hands and how you do not fear our long days apart. And distance is cement blocks heavy on my chest. And yearning has not yet made a stranger of this skin. And love is yet to leave our tongues behind. And fear, lover, fear is reserved for days like this. When every promise of dissolving distance crumbles beneath your breath. They asked about you on the day you left. To the ports of oil cities. And leaving is another rusty farewell. And river is another metaphor for always moving, 
And just when the last cloud empties its sorrow on your cheekbones, just when memory finally burns your palms to ash, you sing, Kif Hali Abui. And I know the winds have tried to make amnesia of my name. Kif Hali Akhal. I know, I know my shipwrecked bones will find their way home someday. But are we not born for a suitcase life? Are we not made to always leave? You sing, and Jabatni Maryam al Ukhra Qitar and Wahakiba. Ardatni Maryam al Ukhra Kawafi. Lover, find me always on a platform, always across a city line, always one step out of reach, but find me always, always in the music. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, a second one? Um, uh, I'll do another uh, Mustafa one and then I'll change, uh, change it up a bit. Um, this one is titled, Mustafa Questions His Choice of Songs. Um, the theme of this one is just questioning like the, the intention behind singing the, some of these songs. Um, you sing, لو مدارات نجمي ضلت وسكة السفر استحالت كوني في دربي الحقيقة الديمة ليها مشاعري مالي My love I pack all our memories neatly into a suitcase I have fashioned from the pieces of you that remain in my backyard. I say onwards and upwards, but really I mean inwards with no direction. I have been on this road for some time now, and there are no stars to light my metaphorical road or any biblical miracles to guide me, just a suitcase full of memories I have no use for, and a stomach with a single butterfly gasping for air. I remember Mustafa often, Wonder if when he sang, La min al ayyam makhafa, I do not fear the long days apart. I wonder if he meant it or hoped he would sing it into a truth. Wondered if when he sang, Kuni Najma, be my star, if he was begging for direction or just asking for something beautiful to distract him from his lonely. I remember, Kuni fi darbil hagiga, be on my road the truth. Realize that I ask too often just for the truth and that I'm tired of feeling like it is too much to ask. Mustafa sings in Ketab Nabd al-Aghani, the heartbeat of songs has been silenced, and I realize that I still hold my breath for you, in steady walks towards or away from you, in sharp exhales, almost mistaken for sighs, in deep breaths and a chest full of music, in cracked cribs and no air. I realize that I have never known a waiting like this. I remember, and Jabatni Maryam al Ukhra Qitaran wa Hakiba. The Virgin Mary burst me a train and a suitcase. And I realize just how long this road has been. I have a suitcase full of memories. Every now and then I take one out and tie it around a tree, hoping you can retrace my steps someday and maybe find your way back to me. Thank you. Wow. Mm. Mm. So, uh, number three is a charm. Um, oh shit, my thing turned off. Sorry. <laughs> One second. Technical difficulties. Mm. Um, okay. This one is called um, Secret Garden, September 10th. In every honeycombed memory I hold of my friends, laughter announces its presence. One night in my favorite secret garden in Khartoum, my best friend and the man I may be starting to love sit in front of me, taking apart their armor in song, a lip sync. And every time a line reminded them of me, they would slap my knee or tap my shoulder. And I would laugh, not self-conscious about my crooked teeth and they would sing, not self-conscious about their terrible voices. And my God, you should have seen how easily open air consumed our joy, how the tree branches stretched and reached for a taste, how the river is still rippling from the echo of your laughter, how your laughter still ricochets off the walls of my memory and baby, my ears, my ears, my ears are still ringing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. It's good to see, boy, 
if this is what you are our third poet from the, the Sudan, and um, uh, I am very, very glad to begin to hear some of the rich poetry from your country. That's Welcome amazing, to the Thank World you. Cafe. Welcome to the World Cafe. Sister. Thank you. It's an honor. You're welcome. Uh, and we, we've got a couple new faces up tonight. We've got a face that some of us known for a long time. Uh, he's over stateside now. Let's everyone say hi to David Leo Siwa. Hello, David. Yo, David. David. Uh, thank you, guys. Oh. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> Can we get David? Oh. Okay, well. Yes, hi. Are you on now, David? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, good. Good. Welcome on board, David. Good to see you after a while, huh? Good to see you yes, very much. Too. Thank you. Okay. David will be up later. And now I'd like to move on and ask Mo, are you ready for your second now, Mohammed? Sure. Uh, uh, this one is an old piece like, uh, that I've never finished, but here goes nothing. Cool. I need a daughter, 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 that's all I need. Hey, hey, I need a daughter, daughter, daughter's all I need. I remember the first day of my job, the initiating ritual, two steps and a handshake with a smile that is mutual until I took a look at that measurement of my cubicle, the ins and out of it, two steps and a handshake, that's how big it was. <laughs> my legs were entrusted to take me somewhere beyond setting on the saddle of nowhere not this chair that has outlasted its comfort it was meant for i was not meant for a mentor to convince me to stay for hours on end to overstay for a stale pay grade to prove that i am somehow worth the boss's spare change mm. i was anointed to preach life not whether uh, not wither as I, as I stand hostage to the knife point of a of an economy that wanted me dead or at least terminally alive enough for obedience, for an unquenchable thirst for dollars as if they were the measuring standards of integrity, the measuring standards of everything. I was appointed to preach life, not look into my wife's eyes and complain about its stagnancy. I was not meant to spend a quarter of a century in a corner of a world so colorful, so beautiful, and I hear this constant phrase about God being everywhere, so why is his disciple still stuck, crunched here, away from his wonders? I mean, these hands, they weren't meant for mountains, these eyes for horizons, this heart for awe, for love, and this mouth for speeches, not telephone calls or pagers. Life did not hone my senses to grow dull into the limbo of a cubicle. God's everywhere, and I got places to be. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Really nice. You, got one? Uh, you have one to back that up? Uh, well, uh, with your permission, folks, I'll finish with a, with a poem that y'all heard a couple of times before. So, Well, uh, a good poem like a good song is what we're doing again. Refresh uh, our memory. Okay. <clears throat> I'm walking dynamite, or maybe just modern men. Take your pick. I'm getting ticketed while I'm speeding on the highway. Pedal to the metal like I'm organic rope roadkill like an expiration date on speed dial. I'm playing chicken with the speed limit and the radar's about to flash me. Maybe tomorrow it'll even Facebook tag me. Got my salary, but it's the end of the month, so the bills are about to harass me. And I'm on 95, about finished with my 9 to 5, and I still got a class to be. The speedometer's waving back and forth the dashboard like an arm wrestling match. I got a mission match schedules, ditch and patch relationships, stitch and latch my patience in, and I'm mourning for my advils. I got a headache beating like an anvil. I got a booking, I got to cancel, a lot of rage I want to channel, got to travel and set an example. I want to wait a minute. 
Lieutenant, this is the boss calling me, trying to give me more than I can handle. Hello? Yes, sir. Anything you need, sir. Anything to <laughs> anything the dollar deems worthy to be, sir. Anything to appease the demands of the man with the means, sir. Sure, what's at me, those rat tunes I gotta make depression dance to because I'm walking dynamite with a distasteful lack of appetite for life. My aging prices, uh, my, my aging process expedited my generations extraditus sentence due negligence due to our forefathers who have made an economical martyr out of us and they say that I'm writing just to make a scene I'm not writing to make a scene I'm just tired not tired of an honest living just tired of not living honestly yeah. hmm. right, thank you and uh, now I'd like to call up uh, Someone uh, that I haven't heard from before, and that would be Raham. Would you like to present now, Raham? Yeah, sure. I don't mind. Please. But come on. Uh, how how many poems? Well, we're thinking three poems, unless of course they're as long as uh, you know Coleridge or somebody. I think I could do two short and then one long. Is that fine? You, you'd be fine with us. Yeah, and kind of gauge it the way you've been hearing it. Is in other words the way All to right. put it. Time-wise, okay. Okay. I think five we're minutes is a second. Okay. We're, we're gonna do. But we don't have any bells or gongs here. You know. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Here it goes. Um, this poem is called uh, "The Weeping City." I'm a crystal ball, the city you want to visit but not reside. My seasons change in a switch and sometimes collide, from scorching air to flooded streets. Will you send a prayer without deceit? An overflowed mailbox of words formed in disguise. Answer me. Answer me with the sound of emptiness, but not in lies. I'm a crystal ball of a city you want to visit, but not reside. My people roam the streets with tongues that died. Where is the wrong in my city that weeps? The green is faint, for my trees are asleep. I'm a crystal ball that you'd easily crush and break, if only a visitor would come and not call it a mistake. So that's the first poem. Okay, I think I'll read the second one. Is that your dog again? Sorry, yeah, oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I perform, he starts barking. <laughs> Uh, okay, the second one is called uh, Empty Funerals. This one's a heavy one. <sighs> okay. My nails are dirty from the mud I dug. My arms are sore from dragging their bodies. There were no caskets, no loved ones to say goodbye, no speeches were given, no one to help me clean up the mess, the stain of blood on their flesh. I buried them in the clothes they were killed in. I was taught to respect the dead, but where is the respect in decorated funerals? Where is the respect in decorating their bodies? It's like saying to them, I know you got killed, but I'll forget that and picture you the way I want to. Four bodies. I buried four bodies in four funerals. First body, a 13-year-old child. I dragged her by her cold legs. Her voice was like still water calm and pleasant. Her smile, the only feature people came to know. Her legs were so fast, they outran all the monsters, except one. The monster that hid in the shape of a family friend, he placed his hand on her leg and she no longer was able to run, or walk, or even crawl. She died in his car, and I buried her. I mourned for her. I did not mourn in black, I mourned in anger, the silent color that is only heard from those who wore it at an empty funeral. The second body, I dragged her from her heart. She had only one artery still left attached to her dragging, still left attached to her while I dragged her entire body along. She was 17. Her love was generous, yet foolish. Some gave out presents, some let in monsters. People can become monsters. They want what they don't have, and this murderer took the thing they lacked, her heart, tore it 
out over and over until she chose emptiness over pain. She died in her bed. I buried her that night. Didn't even give her body time to freeze. It was still warm. I did not mourn her in black. I mourned her in denial. The forgotten color that is only felt from those who wore it at a, and did not take it off, even after the funeral. Third body, a 20-year-old. I dragged her from her tongue. She didn't just speak of lies. She wrapped her body around it. I'm fine, she'd say. I don't need anyone. She was an addict, addicted to pain. And I, I killed her before she killed herself. I did not mourn her in black. I mourned her in change, the cleansing color that murderers wear in funerals. Fourth body was a 25-year-old woman. I didn't drag her. She walked to her coffin and laid down as I filled her, uh, filled her lungs with sand. I didn't kill her, but I didn't stop her. She snapped, the kind of snap that brought down the mansion in her mind that she had built for years. She roamed around aimlessly until she found herself buried six feet down, and she allowed it. I didn't mourn her in black. I mourned her in searching. The color that we often forget exists in funerals. I buried four bodies. I buried myself four times. I had four funerals. I grieved in anger for the child that couldn't run. I grieved in denial for the teenager that died in disbelief. Now I grieved in change for the victim I killed in order to live. And I grieved in search for the woman that forgot who she was. I visit their stones in passing seasons to remind myself that in order to survive tragedies, we need to mourn the victims we buried. For each time I dragged and buried myself, my tired arms grew stronger. My heart that bared bruises got tougher. We die, we mourn, we rise, and we survive. So that's the long one. May I ask again, where, where, where are Sorry? you from? I'm Saudi. Sorry, oh, you're Saudi. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And for the third one, it's a charm. <laughs> ah, hmm. Okay, this one is me being angry at the world, basically, <laughs> at the, how the structure is like. So it's called corrected structure. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go. We live in a failed structure that's eaten by rust. Ignorance, a game, to gain our trust. We were forced in its, to fit it in its colors of copper and brown, even if we were pure as white or gold as a crown. We were born to move freely. But metals were placed, a creation of disciplined robots we embraced. There is a heart that beats among a collection of stones to be, they told us, to be different is a crime. We all must be clones. So repeat the words they stitch on your tongue. If you use your own, they'll stuff it in your lung. Cough and cough, claim you have a cold, release the dusty lines that were untold. Our flesh and skin are laid on their table, Pulling until stretch marks are our label. We are insane if we don't submit to their rules, but why should we wear a mask and play the fool? Traditions, tribes, society, and people, why does my no make me so evil? We have a heart, a mind, and a voice of our own, a freedom to choose, for only my name will be on the tombstone. We need to vaccinate our home before their infection reaches our spine, but they'll rearrange our genes to their design. Branded by DNA, sneeze, and to them you will be a mutation. Who are we? Who are we if we use their voice and set fire to our imagination? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, wow, thank you. Woo. And so now I'd like to uh, cross the ocean over uh, to the state of Illinois and call on uh, Christopher, to present for us, please. Yes, 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 indeedy, the ill, the ill state, some of us call it, that's if you're a b-boy or something like that, but uh, yeah, land of Lincoln, home of the Obamas and folks like that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go old school, so let me put on my, uh, my cap again. <laughs> 
And it, this is a shout out to the East Coast, but especially New Jersey. I'm going to go put on my old school fat gold chain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so see Muhammad like, yeah, he, he, know, he know what's up. So um, right. I would, I would glam, be glam. Yeah, you know, old school, man, you know. So, you know, the world's a stage, you know. So I would be remiss if I didn't say that this particular poem uh, was inspired by the, the late great, probably my, my favorite spoken word artist of, of all time period is Amiri Baraka, born and yeah. raised in New Jersey. Um, I've been listening to him on, on um, streaming music as of late, and, and I was also listening to a class he was teaching somewhere on the East Coast, I believe, maybe on the West Coast, and it's just phenomenal how, how great of a, a poet that he, he was, and even still is, in, you know, in spirit, so... Whenever I think about myself as a performance artist, I think about Amiri Baraka, or I should. So, and maybe I shared this poem here before, maybe not. We need powerful, empowering poetry. Poetry that promotes positivity. Poetry that encourages people to progress. Poetry that gives birth to revolution. We need poetry that puts on black berets, black pants, and black boots. Poetry that rises and run, raises its fist to run a theater of presence to oppose its rendering racism, sexism, racism, sexism. Poetry that challenges the boys in blue. Poetry that kicks butt when we sit back and say, hey, hey, get them, poetry. Poetry that gives birth to revolution. Black folk need poetry that gains the grime in the ghetto. Poetry that, cha poetry that saves racist women, gutless men, and guiltless children, and guides them back to greatness. Poetry that disintegrates crack and evaporates alcohol so we don't continue to fall into destruction. Poetry that gives birth to revolution. This world needs... This world needs poetry that puts an end to poverty, to starvation, to homelessness, to AIDS, to cancer, to dehumanization, to mass incarceration, to prison privatization, to policing children in our systems of education, to unjust detention, to criminalization of, seeking, of those seeking immigration, to death during migration, to the horrible border situation. Poetry that gives birth to revolution. That's that poem. Thank you. Thank you. In the spirit of my main man, Amiri Baraka, rest in peace, rest in peace. And if you're not hip to his poetry, Google him. That's all you got to do. And Amiri Baraka is just flame. And I mean, yeah, oftentimes I, I can't think of a better spoken word for it, let, let alone somebody who wrote plays, somebody who performed with jazz musicians. Yeah, Amiri Baraka is the truth, for sure. Uh, what can I follow that up with? Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll share a piece that I have. I know I haven't shared. Yeah, on you know what? You know what I think you should do, though? Take off your chain, man, because it's disrupting your vocal clarity. It's giving uh, feedback. A word? Okay, let me take off my fat gold chain. Yeah, there you go. But it was dope while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, man. <laughs> Yeah, that was a shout out to the East Coast for sure. It's a place where I've, I've spent uh, a lot of time being here in the States. Let's see. Um, oh, here it is. This is How Can We Make Peace Sexy? Huh. How can we make peace as sexy as Denzel Washington brandishing a gun or a bomb? How can we make peace as sexy as Tom Cruise, Will Smith, Gwyneth Paltrow, or Angelina Jolie? How can we make peace sexy so that to it the masses pay attention? So that to a leader who speaks about peace, our children and our youth listen, listen, listen. I find it uncomfortably necessary to make peace as sexy as Halle Berry. How can we make peace sexy enough to make gun, lo gun lovers salivate over it? Enough to support an effective, active department of peace, a department of peace, peace. How can we make peace sexy like half-dressed car models, expensive cognac or sleek beer bottles, the new involved teenage band, a well-known soap opera star, so that, that about peace we want to understand? How can we make peace something that's constantly in demand? How can we make peace sexy, sultry, hot, steamy, dreamy to die for, to make people come back for more? Make it so sexy that no one will ever remember or think about war. How can we make peace sexier than a fast red car so that it is not considered strange or bizarre? I take a deep breath, then slowly release, wondering how do we create a sexy peace? 
our schools, our streets, our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, our world needs peace, shalom, peace, peace, shalom, peace. And that's that poem. Thank y'all. And, and, and your third? Um, third, what can I follow that a little bit? I like telling a story. So I shared this the other day with uh, Spoken Word of Paris. I met her at a bookstore. I met her at a bookstore amidst the aroma of coffee, laughter, and conversation. Somehow our eyes met. We began to admire and respect one another's presence. In essence, I considered that first glance a chance, a chance, a, a chance, a, a chance for my soul's salvation. Clearest to me was the sunshine of her smile and the beauty of her dimpled cheeks, which caused me to slip, slip, stumble over my speech. From time to time, you see her laughter was liquid upon the jazz that played lightly in a cafe. Christopher D. Sims couldn't have had a better day. She saw me sipping green tea serenely and wanted to meet me. Me? Turns out that she beat me to the last copy of Sister Soldiers, the coldest winter ever, you see. That's how we met. Her hand touched mine, and in a brief moment in time, we seemed to marry one another. I found myself smothered under the glory of her greatness, singing silently in a blanketing bliss of love's unpredictable beauty. I met her at a bookstore. I met her at a bookstore. I met her at a bookstore. My life has changed forevermore. And that's my third thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. And, and before we go into our next poem, I want to tell you how grateful I am that you reference Mary Baraka, mm -hmm. because this, the establishment of both complexions tries to keep him out of the poetry canon and out of the discussion, you know, because they were afraid of that kind of truth, especially when it was crafted in such excellent poetic craftsmanship. He's the one that got me started as a jazz poet. Oh, wow. Very nice. generous man. Yeah, he brought me to Newark and then to the New Eureka Poets and La Casa de las Americas and all that. He was a very generous man. He spoke strongly. Personally, he was very kind. You know, very, very generous. He always talked like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but man. But for him to have, for New Jersey to take the, the yeah, the, for them to have taken the New Jersey Port Laureateship away from him, yeah, they were scared. Yeah, yeah that, that's what happens, yeah. You know, it, you know, it happens in Latin America often, and it happened in, in Nigeria with Ken Sarawiji. You know, and it occasionally happens in the United States. Although in the States, as Bob Dylan said, uh, it, rather than shoot you, they would rather silence you. And it goes on today, believe me. Okay, especially in this era of uh, overcorrection censorship. Okay, so we have a, another member on uh, on board here, and I hope he can hear me. His name is Mohammed Ta, T A H. Are you with us, Mohammed? Hello, unmute. Hello, yes. Hi there. Okay, where in the world are you from tonight? Uh, first of all, I want to say hello for everyone and thanks for okay. uh, sharing their poems. That it's uh, very touching. I like it. Uh, I am from Afghanistan. Okay. Yeah. And would you like to present something this evening? Uh, yes, I I want to share uh, two poems. One please is. Please do. Um, sorry. Yes, please. Yeah. One is uh, just explaining my life, and one is uh, just uh, for uh, just a feeling, you know. It's. Uh, so I am great to sing that one first. <clears throat> Whenever the clouds of pain and sadness loomed, whenever tears come till the eyelash, whenever the lonely heart got scared, I told my heart, oh my heart, why do you cry? This is what happened in this world. This deep silence this world has distributed into everyone. Some sadness is a part of everyone's life. Some sunshine is a part of everyone's life. Your eyes are wet without reason. Every second is a new season. 
why do you let go of such priceless moment or out why do you cry thanks thank you and the second one i have to sing from uh, i i want to say thanks for bell to to translate that to make the correction because uh, my english is not as well as great to to do that all the stuff so my pleasure my pleasure Everything will be better when you are wedding what's better. You are kind father and your beautiful mother. Having them all, having them will make you stronger. Repealing, repealing from distorted heart. Come to come tormented side. I am punished for being come for being born theirs. What crime did I commit? This country is a little strange out there. Sometimes bomb in the track. Sometimes the mafia attacks. Many, many a time I saw them cause a cause a fire. All of of all of government is a liar. They are so cheap. Many people like me sat down. We see, but we have to keep on. I tell myself that it is dream in my sleep. They wanted to kill me like others. I escape from them, my mother says, it's better. I choose the hard way to get through the border. It was so difficult to leave home and my brothers. On the way, I wrote a poem for mother I felt scared, cold, hungry, and night was very long. Crossing the beach, bloody for, for an hour, 16 days pass, you feel dirty, but have no shower. The smuggler took everything, even my money. I arrive in Paris with nothing like a new baby. I have no language, no money, no family. I thought that Paris was a was so pretty but it but it wasn't refugees sleeping in the street like uh, refugees sleeping in the street and the sky was very cloudy night come no home for me and feeling sleepy god bring me a glass of water what i made free myself from this memory this lifeless heart this lifeless heart your help made it alive. Thanks for that. Thank you. And in the future, Mohammed, if you wish, in the future, if you wish to read in your own uh, language as well as English, you are more than welcome because we do that here with the World Cafe. We read in our native language as well as uh, English or French. So remember that in the future. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay and, and come back again. Mo, Come back. Do you want to hear the original tonight or another time? Um, uh, I would like to ask Mohammed what he'd like to think. Thank okay. you, Claire. If you would like to read the original later, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, thank you, but next time it will be better. I, I didn't knew that that uh, I, I, I could sing the original because it's uh, it's more comfortable for me as well because it's not yes, my native course. language. And more beautiful in your native language. Of course. I hope. Okay. No okay. less beautiful than you know, in your English. Okay. Well, now, <clears throat> now I'd like to move on to someone we haven't seen on the screen before, who was a stalwart poet in Paris, now living back in the United States. And so uh, I would like to uh, invite to present now David Leo Siwa. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Mo. I'm so glad I could come today. Um, from uh, New Brunswick, Canada right now. Uh, and I chose this poem uh, partially because it looks sexier to read from a book, the biopic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also because it's, uh, it's my sobriety poem and I, I like Mo to hear it. Uh, so this is called Lost at Sleep. 
now is the time to become strong and laugh along with the wild gods who walk upon our ocean crests and deserts, each nuit blanche, all sunlight long. Forever feeling a little lost, couldn't see where these feet floated. Turned my head wide, new snowy owl tuft, and still never glimpsed the man who looked, never arrived at where I lived. Authentic friends and open secret loves caught the boy at his hide and seek. A new prescription for eyeglasses revised a grown man. When almost young, I sculpted out of breathless clay a bust of this machine that is to me a David, flawed beloved, with tragicomic allergy to dust. Everywhere, a sincere stranger, foreigner, who my other mother, dream visitor since kindergarten, named Madhava, the sweet one. Well, Madhu means honey, one food that never perishes. What do I mean? More than a mixture of my dad, the would-be Father Leo Rosario, blood laced with wine and Roman time. And mom, whose mother superior said to her, should be another kind of mother. Skin perfumed with song and longing, I studied the depths of a mirror, mom's long ago lost photographs, and felt this face's paper landscape. Can I shape from gray matter an inner renaissance? A better maker made his way past the atelier in night's silkiest silence and confessed the next day my clay eyes would not let go of him. A generation later, the coast of my mortality came into view. Near a lighthouse, my ribs attempted to clutch, touch last year's man. The future's elusive, illusory wife, drenched in a blood-red supposed cure for pain. I tumbled down onto metro tracks a minute before the train, a sign not hard to read. Lost at sleep below a pine green bench, a match set with the bottle by my pillow that drank 33 degree dawn rain on Rue des Sols, the creeping willow road, no joke. I was blinded by my thickest blanket. 12 moons grown, and gone since my sisters plucked me out from that Parisian sea of empty thirst. A dream walk through dark woods, direct path lost to me. I follow your quick ballerina feet, medicine woman, humble shaman. You murmur in my ear a soft and strong poetic letter, not that firefly word blessings, which my other mother whispered firmly after nine pregnant moods, moons, the hour before I moved out of her rooms of blue pearl incense filled with gods and echoes of sacred Sanskrit names, words of infinite resonance. Your role charged with the subtle power to delicately deliver her hardest message, diamond so dense with knowing you break each hammer that falls. No apocalyptic trumpet, no alarms to startle me. Your breath warms my dream. This is the year of the key. Do not romanticize that season of slow momentum mist. Mornings came to consciousness with faint stale smells of fermented grapes. Snowdrop and crocus could have claimed your form. You must change your life or die, David. Wear your other mother's fuller name, Madhava, the sweet one, honey steeped in plain green tea. Come to poetry, come to me. Go to music, go to me. 
Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. All right. Well, Thank you, David. Yeah. You're welcome. I, I, um, David, I, I read that poem when you posted it online. And as you indicated, it means something very directly intimate between you and I. As yes. I also, I myself, I gave up alcoholism and uh, haven't looked back. And that's why I'm sitting here alive today. But anyway, I want to thank you and ask you if you have another one. <clears throat> uh, if you wish, yes, a short one. Um, Please. This is a poem, it's a, it's a meditation on meditation. It's called cool. Still. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still. The dead can do it. From them I learn to be still and quiet. Still, my thoughts are loud. Still, I murmur in images. Still, there are minuscule movements I can't control when I sit still. Gentle tremble of hands, eyes, lips, and the mind's blizzard of pointed letters. In a not quite forgotten full lotus pose ritual, I begin to fill my body with an expanding soul steeped in the spirit of the whole universe's blue lotus, one turning. Night unfolds the contours of her charcoal velvet blanket, and I sense my red magnetic spirit drawn toward you more than beforehand, another movement I cannot control. My empty palms reach for the circle of light you wear around your dancer's figure across the border river. Echoes of your evening teachings, lightning on my inner night horizon. Electric charges surge through your form, flicker in your liberated laughter and gentle maple sugar tones to flash truths before my heart's eye. In the beginning was the word, and the word is with you still. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, I think before uh, we all take a minute to read again, uh, I believe I, I'm the last one to read, so I'll take the last turn uh, about this. And um, <clears throat> asked Clara if she wanted to read. I did. And she said she didn't. I'm sorry, Bill. Um, okay. Sorry, all of us. Okay. So uh, I, I want to um, read something that it's called a suite in three movements. And uh, I was commissioned to go into a jazz recording studio with this. And I don't have that jazz recording studio. So I'll read it as it came out in this, this book called uh, I Want to Make Jazz to You. And, and tonight I'm feeling like close to Paris. And as so sweet and three movements, and here's one. I see so many beautiful women walking and talking and fussing and seated on the metro. Paris abounds with radiant femmes. The beauties most attractive to me are brunettes, brown and black haired ladies of various nationalities. I stare with discretion at a well-measured distance. These women are neither very young nor very old, but in their prime. And within moments, the cause of my admiration becomes clear. They resemble you. Oft times I superimpose you, your face, upon these women, and I imagine you. I quickly become sensual, growing warm, affectionate, love struck for you. I may close my eyes to envision the deep wells of your eyes. Next, I draw out your smile. I will call up your voice and listen to your laughter, ha ha. I then outline and slowly trace your most erotic busy. If I should allow this distraction to continue, I reach for the touch of your hand, your shoulder, the nape, of your soft neck and translate, 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 I lean forward into your embrace. This is the moment I lose all sense of my intended destination as I am rendered helpless before the image of you. There is no vacuum between lovers. 
This is the intangible law of love. And I am in that timeless space consumed by throbbing sensations, romantic desires. I have entered an ethereal mist of delightful fragrance, most uniquely yours. Vertigo sends me reeling, absent the confines of floor and walls and ceiling. I have escaped gravity's hold, afloat in weightless abandon, a state of absolute comfort, safe and secure from doubt and reservation. I know them both so well, but here I am and join to the love that is you. Mere mortal, I know I am a bell, a buzzer, the shriek of the brakes returns me to my task at hand. And I step from the metro and exit through the door to feel the slap of cold winter rain on my face. And at this juncture, your presence is indelibly stamped to my heart. Alone, I need no word or sight of you, no palpable contact. The proof of my love is stowed unshakable in the deep reserve of me reserved again for you. From this wellspring, you flow fluid flush circulating through my body, through my limbs, in my mind's eye, part and parcel of the breaths I give out. Comes a late hour, I have done all that I could do since I began this journey. I let go the routines, the acts to prepare for sleep, and last on my mind in my wondering thoughts, would it please you to know I have carried you along in the pockets of my day? Wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and now I'll skip to another, uh, another also true story that happened in Paris. And uh, uh, this is simply called Your Kiss. Your Kiss shot through me like a heat seeking muscle fixed on pleasure. Your breath fanned my flame, the blood in my tongue caught fire. Your kiss put back the light in my eyes. I am shining and bright. I see the road home in the centuries of stone. A thousand years have passed and still I know you by your touch, your taste, your smell. Our embrace pleased fickle Paris such she paused to starlight smile. She blew a perfumed breeze and filled the air with wind song. Your kiss solved mysteries, stirred in my vague dreams of exile across the sands of time, adrift in a sea of solitude. And under midnight skies, I rose, I sang your song in the darkness. Your kiss is ageless. Its taste of herbs and oils, a balm to my lips, a salve to my soul. Your kiss was brief, and soon you gone. I stand alone, without a song, where river spills into her ocean, spellbound still, I let you go. The dam of my desires, burst of bittersweet streams, waltz upon the waves, they waltz upon a way. I love you so this Sunday night, a fool enlightened, a poet driven to the brink of beautiful sorrow. The coming dawn shall fill the sun and gently press his lips upon the quiet nocturne surrenders all. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, wow, this has been one hell of a world cafe. And uh, what I invite you to do now is begin again. And uh, I would like to ask, you know, to begin again, to go back to uh, Prince. Would you like to begin us again, Prince? Okay, let me see. <sighs> I was so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. And I would ask us to do a two short ones or one long one. Uh, and if we're around after that cycle, we'll go into a third round. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, this one is called Indigenous. Despite her being an American citizen, born and raised in South Dakota, she has often been made to feel like an alien, a second class citizen. In fact, she'd be quite wealthy if she had just one penny for every time someone said to her, what are you? Her usual sarcastic reply, why I'm a human being, what the hell are you? Quite embarrassed, they sheepishly reply, sorry, but what I meant to say is, what's your nationality? As if her looks were so un-American. I guess, judging by her melanin-tinted skin, that hawk-like stare emanating from piercing brown eyes, the proud and prominent slope-like nose and those lips full like clouds of rain and thunder that always seem to question what this shameless American government will try and take away from her beloved people next. Needless to say, there's no way she could possibly be mistaken for an American citizen. A Mexican, maybe, though her features were clearly quite indigenous, with an elongated chin and chiseled cheekbones as sharp as mountain ridges, the proud blood of the ancestors still alive, ever flowing like a river of wild salmon running freely through her veins. Occasionally, the ancestors speak to her via whispers in the wind, remind her who she is and where she comes from. So she, in turn, will remind others of the indigenous people who first roamed this land alongside the wolves, the deer, the eagle, and the bison. The true Americans who roamed this continent for centuries, long before the Christian mercenaries and the white settlers came with their guns, their ships, their Bible, and their Jesus. Long before there ever were the United States of America. Long before your presidents, your politicians, your laws, and your government. Long before your nuclear weapons of mass destruction. Long before your soldiers and your wars. Long before your imperialist gentrification, indigenous extermination via eminent domain. Long before the railroads came. Long before the slave trade, Jim Crow, and the civil rights movement. Long before the gold rush, black gold, big pharma, big tobacco, and the NRA. Long before your border walls and homeland security. Long before Walmart, Wall Street. Long before McDonald's, Target, and Starbucks. Long before your miseducational system, matrix indoctrination via radio and television. Long before mandatory school vaccinations and forced sterilizations. Long before your diseases started killing us. AIDS, cancer, Ebola, and smallpox, long before the Pony Express, Morse code, the U.S. Post Office, AT&T, and the Internet, long before social media, Google, Instagram, Amazon, Facebook, and Twitter, long before segregation, your ghettos, redlining, and subdivisions, long before your housing projects, concentration camps, and reservations, long before ethnic cleansing, mass incarceration, via prison industrial complex, long before the ominous threat of deportation, the U.S. government deliberately separating parents from their children, long before devastating impact of your drug trade, your alcohol, and gambling upon the fabric of our families, long before wounded knee and the trial of trail of tears, we're all still crying after all these years. Long before the people of Standing Rock stood up against your pipelines. Long before you polluted our land, our skies, our oceans, rivers, palms, and streams with their fossil fuels emanating from your factories, cars, trucks, boats, and planes resulting in acid rain and climate change. The indigenous tribes, tribal nations were here living in peace and harmony with nature, their spirits, still watching over the land, the holy ground where their blood still nurtures the soil that was stolen from them, not just by way of trickery and greed, but an inherent sense of privilege and entitlement, which eventually gave way to their fear 
unleashing a deep-seated hatred and racist bigotry, enabling one group of people to completely devalue, to humanize, and to slaughter another. In peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. You, you know what I'm going to do? Because the screen um, uh, pre screen placement has changed, I'm just going to ask the next person to the last person's right as it is on the screen. Uh, okay, that's it. That, that. So the, the, the person next to you is Bill, Bill Stragmeyer. Okay, let's see what I got. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, I've been watching a lot of television and I have a quote from a series called Altered Carbon. Death was the ultimate safeguard against the darkest angels of our nature. I call this, will you get it or you don't, isn't it? <laughs> what you know, you do not know. The key's been put into the lock. It beckons you into the air. The flight to heaven is the plan. And this is the way you're suckered into Norman Rockwell prints that aren't worth, worth the price. They're printed on fake Confederate bills. The torque is turned up full. The hour is set to back of the day. The worth of the person is measured in mud and the dogs are ordered to bay. The talk is of the sophisticated kind, but false in poor language and faith. All believers are fools, so say the kings. The soup wagon teaches them soup. Identities carry the meaning of songs. The ghosts do not die in the dreams. The longing for punishment lights up their eyes while angels and devils fly round. The heroes of lies are the ones who deploy all the love in the script of the schmucks. While spirals lead down to the end of the plot that the servants must keep from the slaves. I tell you this, your claim is weak. The orders come and go within the camps. The word is painted on the walls. The ceiling drips with colored paint. The vista is the one that we've been sent. The ocean fills with salted fish. The line is drawn, the hook's the bait. Your pastime keeps you up to date. There is no then. The sense is conjured into short graffito lines to curl and drip. The when and now are bereft of clocks and the promise of will is forlorn of deeds. And stick your why where the sun doesn't shine for after is all there will be. The how lies with the buried in the times that were shoveled off into space. The predictions what was sent with the trespass of succubes and poltergeists who stepped into the patented space that's rented to the lowest of marks just like us. As the tools and the arms soon shrivel away and the forecasts are baked into, and the forests are baked into brick, the childish army will grow its now as the soft smiles and grimaces fight it out. There will be no climax. The war in the bedroom are now beaten lands. The fog will now descend. The way of the world is, to, is the lie we were taught by the Aryan agents who fell like hail from the sky. The goodness we seek, an invisible cloak made to hide their true faces from those who will die. The smiles that hide gloating now float like a flag over virtual constructs of money and death. Whoa, thank you. And next to you, uh, uh, Clara, if you've changed your mind, Clara Silverson, and you'd well, like to read something. I've heard on TV. And, uh, uh, excuse me a minute there. Clara Silverson, if you've changed your mind and you'd like to uh, read something or present something, you're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, it, it's kind of complicated at the moment, but I, right. and I think I'm going to uh, maybe next week. I'll be okay, there. more than welcome. Thank you okay. very much. Jack, you were saying something, Jack? Yes, I, I wanted to say that uh, what Bill read was the best thing I've heard on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. There's a few of us, Brad, out there doing the lube on the, net, uh, on the Netflix tube. <laughs> and it's quarantine over here. Oh, next in line is uh, David Leo Siwa. Holy wow, thanks, man. I'm sure. so happy uh, to be among uh, friends again, poetic friends. Uh, I've never read this poem before. Uh, I just finished my manuscript uh, for my long book, The Flavor of Water, uh, last night. 
Uh, this one is called Sapphire Sphere. Cher Bleu, when December died, I woke in the deep dark of 5.55 a.m. and peacefulness pulsed in all the halls of my blood. Poetry poured out of the eye in the palm of my hand, blissful tears of indigo ink. For a moment, all my eyes were open, those in the soles of my feet, kaleidoscopic iris between my brows, the eye at the root of my sentient spine, blue lotus of the throat, and the eye that desires to look upward the seventh chakra in the fontanelle. Three times before I first ate, amid the refrains of my morning chant, a vision of the blue pearl of pure consciousness, a flash of light flooded my head with wonder. As my other father, teacher's teacher said, a yogi lives in astonishment. On hearing this, my heart fell into sweet, Silence, one taste of this truth. I've heard that the blue pearl seen by sages throughout the ages dwells in the crown of the head. Inner treasure we all carry in the still soft fontanelle, the size of a sesame seed said to hold the whole cosmos in its glow. Serious seekers of liberation search lifelong for this vision, lest beyond measure, I wear our blue pearl everywhere, at times aware of its being there. But when I am, I can see it clearly in your humble bone crown, open secret of the divine, hidden within, often the last place we look. Last night, cher bleu, before I abandoned my body to a soft, bed of mantra i sent you a question or message from my wood and glass worldly monk's room where only the visionary window gives a hint of freedom what is the end of work without end blue pearl in the tender crown of the head to anyone else this might be a riddle opaque koan or cause for hard plastic laughter. At times I feel work is a steep ascent up a mountain made of dust that falls farther, the harder and higher I climb. Use work as a means to attain liberation, you remind me. The always abrasive lotus in which our rough spots are polished. Cher Bleu Claire, forever we begin again, here on this well-lit paper stage of spotless awareness, where it is clear I am unreal, yet feel far more than these thin lines and circles can contain. 25 years in the past, I asked an elderly student of my guru, my other mother, what is enlightenment? After long silence, he said, with half a laugh, it's not what you think. <laughs> what is the end of words without end? Yes, I may climb an incline that falls beneath my feet, dust on dust, when that's how I see it but I will hold my focus still within that indigo seed, luminous and truer than this powerful illusion, world that seems so solid. Nila Bindu, the blue pearl, your body born for ballet bows toward it always. You throw a window around the sun with your wild and surprising childlike laugh that reverberates in the space within my heart and share with half a smile. Maybe enlightenment is the biggest joke of all. We run so fast after it, but we're sitting on it all along. The ground, 
that underlines us. Pause between breaths, space between two thoughts. Embrace the spaces, remain the wordless witness. The one we look so hard for is the one who is looking. <laughs> Namaste, <laughs> David. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> next time you don't be so quick next time. <laughs> the blue pearl, that's great. Thank okay, you. Okay, next would be Roxanne. Hello, Roxanne. Uh, I'm working. Uh, there you go. Am I on now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're always on. Roxanne. All right. So this is a little uh, introduction to a prose piece I'm working on. I'm just going to read the first paragraph. Um, once upon a time, there were two young friends, a boy and a girl living side by side in adjacent houses, playing together every day in their shared garden, playmates as close as siblings. Each child imagined to be the other's sweetheart and both considered the future perpetuation of this tandem existence inevitable and unremarkable. They played pretend as if this game were a rehearsal for that future, practicing every detail of their harmonious life together to joint satisfaction. As they matured, their childhood pretense turned into romance and perhaps what some might call true love. They showered each other with constant praise and frequently exchanged small precious gifts of the heart. The teeniest pink rose one day, a slippery green lizard the next, the sighting of a cobweb sparkling with diamonds after the rain a shared discovery of a robin's nest with its loot of pale blue eggs, the perfect skipping stone to flick across the width of the pond, the linger of fingers, the comfort of embrace, warm breath on the nape of the neck, reassuring whispers in the ear, the brush of soft lips, all preludes to a kiss. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And now if we could hear from Cesar. Cesar. <clears throat> Hello, Cesar. I, yeah, uh, was I on the on the order that you were Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On, this, on my on my screen. Oh, I'm really? calling everyone. You're in the right thing. <laughs> in the right time. <clears throat> okay. Okay, hold on. Um Okay, so I'm going to read in English and then in Spanish and then in English again, like I usually do. Um, okay. Stoicism for the masses. Let's talk about the Doppler effect and react accordingly, trying not to leave big gaps in comprehension. I had to transport myself psychically to the Bay Area just so I could accomplish the splitting at such critical stage before the curves flatten. Realize it's not a race. It has taken others the best parts of their lives to write do down what their dreams meant. Static feather, I awakened with the desire to place you on my palm so you could la later dance on this page. A girl wanted to be taken back to blazing high hills and listen to a Beck record she used to bump as a teenager hooked on Elliot. For line break dismissals were so common, just like naked women on a surf town. You sure you, you, you sure you've taken that tab? Those pupils don't look too dilated. Meditation has turned into the drug of choice. Subtle mudra signals were sent to my initiated pals so that their hearts could shed layers and expose their truest colors from within, in tune with Blue Jay's songs. 
firmly established prophets, waving at the least experienced from respective chariots, sipping on their piña coladas, as they lounged in their praising Leviathan, as they creeped up from the depths of the urban miasma. So that's... Um, I would ask you to choose one of the two languages for time's sake, your choice, French or Spanish. Okay, sure. Spanish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Al revés de las aves del monte que viven del valle, aquí, una tarde, aquí, presa, metaloso, terminante, vino el sincero con sus nietos pérfidos. Y nosotros quedámonos. Que no hay más madera en la cruz de la derecha, ni más hierro en el clavo de la izquierda, que un apretón de manos entre zurdos. Vino el sincero, ciego, con sus lámparas. Se vio al pálido, aquí, bastar al encarnado. Nació de puro humilde el grande. La guerra, esta tórtola, mía, nunca nuestra. Diseñóse, borróse, ovó, mataron. Llevóse el ebrio al labio un roble, porque amaba, y una astilla de roble porque odiaba. Trenzáronse las trenzas de los potros y la crin de las potencias. Cantaron los obreros, fui dichoso. El pálido abrazóse al encarnado y el ebrio saludónos, escondiéndose. Como era aquí y al terminar el día, qué más tiempo que aquella plazoleta. Qué año mejor que esa gente. Qué momento más fuerte que ese siglo. Pues de lo que hablo no es sino de lo que pasa en esta época y de lo que ocurre en China y en España y en el mundo. Walt Whitman tenía un pecho suavísimo y respiraba y nadie sabe lo que él hacía cuando lloraba en su comedor. Pero, volviendo a lo nuestro y al verso que decía, fuera entonces que vi que el hombre es mal nacido, mal vivo, mal muerto, mal moribundo. Y naturalmente, el tartufo sincero desespérase. El pálido es el pálido de siempre. Será pálido por algo. Y el ebrio, entre la sangre humana y la leche animal, abátese, da y opta por marcharse. Todo esto agítase, ahora mismo, en mi vientre de macho, extrañamente. Ah... Gracias, gracias. Thank you. And thank you. And next is uh, Jack. Jack would be next to you on screen. Mr. Jack. I didn't know I was next to him on screen. I... Yeah, 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 you are. Actually, well, see, I'm, I'm just going from how it's presented on my screen, and that keeps it simple, and everyone gets to participate. I see. All right. Another poem about spring. Cool. It's called uh, Nothing Like the Sun. Mm. There can be no spring without the rain. There can be no spring without tears. Spring has still have I not come to see it at all. Blossom from calorie, pear, tips, oblivion, like tears. Repetitive this, insistence on life, persistent renewal, Refusing to mirror the equal and opposite solicitation of death. Behead each daffodil. Dread 
every hyacinth, chop down the cherry, lest it drop of its own accord. Let want of rain lay desolate summer swath before its time. Humidity already fills the air, excoriates as winter steam will shrink the grape never drunk. Spring but once goes, comes always coerced, so one knows. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Nothing yes. like the sun. Right. <laughs> Can't do without it. And next to you is Mohammed. Mohammed Anif. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, I suppose since uh, the, some people have read their prose, I'm going to go ahead and read one that I've written a long time ago. And it is called Love Can Make Irresponsible Children of Adults. <laughs> Love can make irresponsible children of adults. We hear things the miss and mister dismissed after years of pretentious and promises that pretenses and promises that rang hollow how one pretentiously sizing himself to the caliber of men or a woman committing only to entitlement of being free from baggage as if this is who i am would dismiss what i must do they all enter hormone driven immortal they, they all enter hormone-driven, immortal, seeking only to reap the benefits, momentary sparks of bliss that could ignite some measure of significance in, in their lives. If he would only take one step, one hard, deliberate, laborious step that could set him and her on a path to a journey in which the monotony of life could be broken down to one of meaning, how one can act reckless, yet more earnest than all the homes they have broken finding each other, could be the deed that finally unravels the whole moral of the story. Love is not the point where pleasant coincidences and circumstances meet. It is the in-house civic duty to stand guard, tolerant and sometimes malleable to the ones who entrusted their locks to you. The tenacious pursuit of sculpting fine moments of, out of crude and rough piles of fake debris, refusing to be encrusted by delusions of eternal youth. Youth was not designed to be spent on delusions of godhood. It is not designed to be burnt out on the senseless pursuit of gratification, a capstone for an ego that does not stop rising. Its building blocks the lives they have invaded and left with hands held high, passively imposing their innocence against the responsibilities they were due. They won't need hands to draw distance. They won't need hands when they won't surface from the delusions they've allowed to drown themselves in. The false assurance that the silence would rectify the trails they blazed, while another soul sits bruising, brooding. This soul a bed of coal that forgets it had once glowed amber, now charred with cynicism, charged with a sense of duty to match fumes with a world that consistently neglects it. This soul, a pen left thinking, it was brought to spend its life dying, lamenting in its inaudible sullenness for its ancestors that wrote with gods, worshippers, poets, warriors, lovers, ambassadors of whatever good that knew well how to shoulder the weight of deliberation. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so okay. next up is Raham. Hello, Raham. Yes? Hello. Um, I guess I can read two short ones. Certainly, yes. But they're pretty contradicting, so that would be interesting. 
Such is life, huh? Yeah. Yes, life is contradictory. Exactly. So the first poem is called Unspoken Words. Huh. Um, unspoken? Unspoken. Yeah. The unspoken words. Yeah. If my heart had a tongue of its own, it would speak of the lover that became my home. This genial home of you I long to hold and rest. I dream to be a host, a nightmare it is, if I remain a guest. If you sent yellow roses in crimson color I'd paint, for I can't just be a friend, a yellow rose that would faint. In this city, they seek the illusion of perfection, where we all have our black dots that ache for connection. So this is the first one. Thank the contradicting, <laughs> the contradicting poem is called "The Lost Boy." <clears throat> Beware of the lost hearts; they tend to leave broken pieces behind. Beware of the wavering minds; they cling so loosely to our hands. We are fooled by boys who wear the skin of men, who will let their pride speak while their desire is silenced, who think their scars are a story of failure and weakness, who own a tongue drenched in lies. A journey I will not share, regardless if I care. You will not find yourself in me, and you will not break me as you look for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, well, actually, I was going to say I, that, that just seems so typical of what it is to be to have love and lose love, find love. Yeah, again. exactly. Like the dialectics of love. So when you said that, that's life. I was like, exactly. That's how it yeah. is. And so next yeah, up, what a street. way to go, you know. <laughs> Sorry. What a way to go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so next up on the screen is Christopher. I have a feeling, so I'm a little prepared here. Uh, I'll share this poem on Spoken Word in Paris, too. I don't, know if I, I don't think I've shared it with this particular crowd. But this is an actual experience. And I think mm -hmm. I'll just let the poem speak for itself. It's called I Was in Charlottesville. And just, yeah, quick, a quick snippet. I was there almost three summers ago when Heather Heyer died. And, at the Unite the Right rally with all those neo Nazis and all that, all that mess. So I was right in the thick of it. So this is my experience wow. documenting. I was in Charlottesville during the mayhem, the marches, protests, the fighting, the screaming, the death, the mess, the mess. I was in Charlottesville watching neo Nazis right in front of me, acting, acting as if they wanted to harm me, physically harm me. I was in Charlottesville. It was real. The atmosphere was ill. It would have. Emotions build, I watched emotions build, it would have given you the chills, the chills. I was in Charlottesville where our country clashed over the decision to take down the statue of Robert E. Lee, spearheaded by a young black teenager, but you don't hear that on TV. I was in Charlottesville, calm, collective, paying attention, listening and learning, yearning to be on the front line while my life was being protected the whole time, the whole time. Hostess and newfound friendships were our lifeline. I was in Charlottesville, right here my spirit wants to do a dance. I'm in a trance as my spirit resides in the body of a slave in the 1800s when Robert E. Lee lived in that state. And black folk were terrorized, we are still terrorized by bigotry and hate. I shake to get, get me out of that memory. It's post-traumatic slave syndrome in the 21st century. I was in Charlottesville with Lynn, Ann, Christina, Eric, and Alex when Heather Heyer died. When the couple who witnessed the church with the hurt death came to the time of Jefferson Unitarian University, University's church and cried and cried. I was in Charlottesville with my brother Alan, Alvin Jacobs Jr. from Rockford, Illinois. We watched our democracy being destroyed. And the police just sat there in their cars, seeming to avoid all clear signs that someone that weekend could die, could die, could die. It was the perfect storm, history, culture, rage, resistance and hate, freedom of speech, people to reach and teach and evaluate lies, confusion, and North American bigotry, terrorism, a broken system, and a police who lack structure and vision. They lack structure and vision. Without preparedness, one would assume the situation was bound to go boom. I was in Charlottesville being aware of my black being the whole time, looking out for anyone who wanted to take my life. I was in Charlottesville, a city of 50,000 people in our 10th state. Never could you have imagined such division, such hate. 
the weight of our democracy existed right in its center. It was hot then, but it felt cold like winter. I was in Charlottesville, unharmed, peaceful, quiet, but everywhere around me seemed loud like a riot. I was in Charlottesville and every bit of that city is now in me. I have the ability to return. We will return to Charlottesville as the constitution of this, con of this country burns in the minds of its people. We witnessed that weekend hate turn into evil, the unbelievable. I was in Charlottesville. I pray for Charlottesville. I meditate for Charlottesville. I hope everyone heals in Charlottesville. Heather Heyer died while I was in Charlottesville. And Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, now, I, I remember not so long ago at poetry readings when there was this big debate. If you wrote a poem about social consciousness or political conditions, you were not truly a poet. Boy, mm -hmm. were the naive and the comfortable soon to be upset into the larger and greater realities of the world we live in. Which, which reminds me to say that all forms of poetry are legitimate. Mm -hmm. Now that hopefully that those who scorned on us know that we are as well. Okay, uh, here's a piece that uh, reminds me tonight because uh, we're talking about such unsettling times, um, both in romance and uh, geopolitics, I guess, you know. Uh, and I presented this before a, a, a delegation of Russians and during, during a very hot um, political climate. I was asked to read, they performed jazz and I followed by reading this poem. So I'm going to read it here tonight, and uh, it's called Vosmojno. Vosmojno means possible. It is possible. Because so many perished in ships en route to Ellis Island, because many perish now on the plain before the Rio Grande, because so many perished at Stalingrad and Baby Yar, because so many perished in the ghostly gulags, because so many perished in the Middle Passage, because the stench of burnt flesh in pools of cold blood Mississippi rises to burn my nose, was much no. Because bread tastes no different to the hungry, wheat no preference from which field it gleams. Milk is white, honey brown, rain is crystal clear. Because the golden sun passing through azure sky halts for no checkpoints, barricades, no man's borders, was much no. Because bullets never sing patriotic anthems as they tunnel the flesh of a human being. Because dead men cease to curse each other and the worms don't distinguish the winners from the losers, was much no. Because the harbingers of death varnish our minds, their toxic tongues, brains insane, hearts of empty space, ignorance, fear, oh, so hate, varnished upon a nuclear nose cone destined to kill you so suddenly, you will not have time to hear me cry as I do die a megaton second after. Have you and I ever been asked? Was much because I know that your children dream as my children do under the same starry sky, and darkness is a time for rest, not fear of encroaching dawn. Because I want to die old in a field, she in a garden, he on the sunny side of the porch. Because life, like a river, rushes forward, rushes forward when free to run its natural course until the day it gradually surrenders to the sea. Was moist. Thank you, Mo. <laughs> okay. Um, it feels okay. like. It like feels, thank you. Uh, 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 of course, I want to encourage you all to come back next week and make this again once once again a truly world cafe without the different languages, expressions of poetry of various styles, of various cultures, of various languages. This is what makes us the world cafe. And so I want to remind us that, wow, we had a lot of people tonight. So I want to thank those that are here and not here because I'm sure I'm going to remember them. So I, I think I wrote everybody's name down. I want to thank Prince and Candice 
and Tony and Rhett and Nina and Caesar and Roxanne and Jack and Bill and Lauren and Christopher and Mohammed Tahiri and Clara and David Leo Siwa and Kate and Mo and this Mo and Safwa and Riham. I mm. think I got Thank you. all the 25 of us down. It's been a wonderful night. And as I like to say, everybody, thank everybody. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Come back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Come back next week and bring a bring a Thank poet you. friend. <laughs> and Prince, I got to face your friend request on Facebook. I accepted, bro. Hmm? Uh, he added you on Facebook, but he's waiting for you to accept. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Are you talking to me? Yeah, Chris. Oh, well, I get some playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris, that's what you were saying, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I accepted this friend request. Oh, okay, all right. No, I think we did accept it because I just read your poem today that you posted about six o'clock Paris time, <laughs> maybe about eleven o'clock uh, Illinois time. So we are connected. Oh yeah, no doubt, bro, no doubt. <laughs> and I'm and I'm better for it. <laughs> oh, I'm better for it. I guess I'll say happy for twenty to everybody who's celebrating soon. I mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 if we get stoned, it bounces off the walls. <laughs> well, it's still. Um, what, what day is it? Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's already April yeah. 20 in my end. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. <laughs> it's like it's like it's, it's about to be one o'clock in T minus. 60 yes. seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see in Paris, it's about, what is it, about 11 o'clock in Paris? Yeah. Yep, just about. Well, what What time oh. is it in Brooklyn? Hey, Brooklyn, what time you got, Brooklyn? 4.59. All right. And how are we doing in, in Abu Dhabi? We're, we're the same time? Uh, it, is it is 12.59. Yeah. Oh, for, I know, two hours. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Oh, me, and and in the heartland there, Christopher. What time do you have, Christopher? Uh, it's uh, 3.59 in the morning. All right. Well, all right. Re Reham, what time is it in Saudi Arabia? Uh, it's about 12 midnight. All yeah. right. Hmm. This, is, this is cool. Well, let me, let me cool. just say something real quick. There's a new movie out on Netflix called On the Courts, and it was filmed in Memphis, Tennessee, a city that I've been uh, a humble resident of between <sighs> Illinois uh, and Memphis. So... Mm -hmm. In that movie, there's a, a black man, and he, um, what's the term when you, uh, what's the, uh, the the term for the the expert in wine? You're at the restaurant. Um, uh, wine taster? Sommelier. Sommelier. Wiener log. I used to be a taster in wine. I don't know how expert. <laughs> <laughs> I was the finished man. <laughs> he knows something. Yeah, but but any anyway, that movie is filmed in Memphis, and the, the young black man is striving to become a small AA. So he winds up his class winds up going to to Paris to study mm. for a little bit. So I think you guys will enjoy it. It's called Uncourt. Uh, what's Uncourt? Okay, mm. <laughs> cool. Really good movie. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, great. All right, guys. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, thank, everybody. Thanks, yes, everyone. Yeah. Oh, everybody. Thanks again. Everybody, Jack. thank everybody. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. See you. Thank you. See you then. Thank you so Have much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Yeah. Eduardo.